to Mollenkopf Stadium, home of the Warren G. Harding Raiders and the musical pride of Warren, Ohio, the Warren G. Harding Raider Marching Band. On behalf of the City of Warren, the Warren City Schools Board of Education, and the Warren G. Harding Athletic Department, we welcome you to tonight's game. Fans, we greatly appreciate your attendance here tonight and want to remind you of the following policies here at Mollenkopf Stadium. The following items are not permitted inside the stadium. Outside food and drinks and umbrellas of any kind. A parent or legal guardian must accompany and supervise all elementary and middle school students. To help with our efforts of safety first, we do not allow re-entry, keep aisleways clear, and no standing along railings. To protect our field for years to come, fans are not permitted on the field before, during, or after tonight's game. Warren City Schools are alcohol and smoke-free facilities. Thank you for your attention, and enjoy your night here at Mollenkopf Stadium. Go Raiders. Go Raiders. Go Raiders. Go Raiders. Warren, Ohio, stand up. It's Friday night in the city. Let's meet our Warren G. Harding Raider Marching Band Senior Class of 2024. Sierra Little Clarinet. Faith Plus Saxophone. Faith Code Saxophone. Christopher Cox Trombone. Mia Kuhn Clarinet. Julie Hernandez Clarinet. Jenna Greathouse Clarinet. Carlicia Rogers Flagline. Mia Jones Majorette. Brian Bittner Tuba. Jayla Richardson Majorette. Olivier Lowry, Flagline. Rodriguez Davis, Jermon. Brianna Perry, Clarinet. Kelly Nice, Flagline. Camille Richardson, Flute. Wayne Harris, Drum Major. Ethan Murphy, Tuba. Ernestine Brown, Flute. Arisa Stevens, Flagline. Sarah Bell, Trombone. Michaela Eisenberg, Melophone. Isaiah Williams, Saxophone. Thank you, seniors, for your commitment to the Raider Marching Band, and we wish you great success in your years to come. In cheerleading, it's no secret. You'll fall down. You'll stumble. But on this cheer squad, you gave your blood, sweat, and tears, perfecting your talents and ability. All summer, every camp, every week, Getting back on your feet every time. It's game day. It's time for the cheers. It's time for the spirit of this school to shine. And it's time for your energy. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2023 Warren G. Harding Raider cheerleaders. <laughs>
the right Molokov Stadium senior ceremony will begin in three minutes. Let's meet our Raider football senior class of 2024. Jake Doherty, number 12, kicker punter. Aaron Malone, number 55, O line D line. Nehemiah Jones, number 73, offensive line, defensive line. Brandon Dyson, number 23, DB. Javante Jones, number 5, running back. Javante Ellis, number 52, O line D line. Brandon Powell, number 22, running back, O line. Brian Powell, number 3, linebacker, wide receiver. Richard May, number 72, offensive line, defensive line. Lamar Allen, number 42, receiver and player. Daniel Greyhouse, number 65, offensive line, defensive line. Nehemiah Alexander, number 58, offensive line. Najee Jones, number 14, wide receiver, DB. Jaquan Johnson, number 53, O line, D line. Lamar Adams, number 8, receiver, DB. Warren Wade, number 74, offensive line, defensive line. Thank you, seniors, for your commitment to the Raider football program, and we wish you great success in your years to come. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the home sidelines. On behalf of the Warren City Schools Board of Education, Warren G. Harding High School, and our Warren G. Harding Athletic Department, welcome to the cheer and football senior class of 2024 ceremony. First, starting with cheerleaders, Sheila Allen. She led her for four years, escorted by mother, Brandy Allen, grandmother, Sheila Butler, nephew, Adonne Allen Jr., and cousin, Kirst Sharper. Samira Brantley. She led her for four years, escorted by mother, Jack A. Moore, father, David Brantley, aunt, Margaret Moore, Grandmother, Margaret B. Moore. Delaney Riley. She lettered for three years. Escorted by mother, Leslie Riley. Father, Rick Riley. Sister, Kerrigan Riley. Sister, Natalie Lenny. And brother, Jared Lenny. Let's hear it for our senior cheerleading class of 2024. And now, our Warren G. Harding Raider football senior class of 2024. 
number three, Brian Powell. And twin brother, number 22, Ryan Powell. Both have lettered for three years. Escorted by sister, Lanasia Powell. Sister, Rylasia Powell. Sister, Ryane Powell. Sister, Rishiana Powell. Mother, Tiffany Cherry. Stepdad, Corey Cobb Davis. And dad, Ryan Powell Sr. Next, number five, Javante Jones. He has lettered for two years. Escorted by mother, Tierra Jones. Father, Alvin McMillan. Brother, Terion Reed. And little sister, Tara Reed. Next, number eight, Kamari Adams. He has lettered for one year. Escorted by mother, Latisha Lay. Father, Nate Adams. Brother, Raylan Adams. Sister, Lazaria Mack. And sister, TJ Mack. Next, number 10, Antonio Smith. He has lettered for three years. Escorted by mother, Natasha Jackson. Father, Antonio Smith. Grandfather, Michael Bryant. Stepmother, Jabria Magby. And brother, Liddell Smith. Next, number 12, Jake. Doherty. He has lettered for four years. Escorted by mother, Jenna Doherty. Father, Brian Doherty. Brothers, Theo and Boomer Doherty. And sisters, Libby and Penny Doherty. Next, number 14, Najid Jones. He has lettered for two years. Escorted by Mother, Brenda Jones. Brother, Navar Jones. Leonard Davison. Father, Trayvon Williams. And sister, Chanel Priest. Next, number 23, Braylon Dyson. He has lettered for two years. Escorted by Mother, Shanta Andrews. Grandfather, Alan Harris. Sister, Amora. And brother, Micah Morgan. Next, number 38, Hayden Peronacek. He has lettered for two years. Escorted by mother, Emily Bunce. And father, Kevin Peronacek. Next, number 52, Devontae Ellis. He has lettered for two years. Escorted by mother, Rochelle Ellis. Father, David Ellis. Sister, Diana Ellis. Sister, Shadea Ellis. And uncle, Arlo Cole. Next, number 53, Rajion Johnson. He has lettered for two years. Escorted by mother, Ashley Johnson. Next, number 55, Aaron Malone. He has lettered for one year. Escorted by mother, Sylvia Prince. Next, number 58, Nehemiah Alexander. He has lettered for three years. Escorted by mother, Jada Freeman. Grandfather, Jay Freeman. Grandmother, Twyla Freeman. And mentor coach, Tony Reed. Next, number 65, Dan Greathouse. He lettered for one year. Escorted by father, Del Greathouse. Mother, Katrina Greathouse. Sister, Aaliyah Greathouse. And brother, Carson Greathouse. 
Next, number 72, Richard May. He lettered for one year. Escorted by mother, Kitty Carter. Father, Richard May. Stepfather, Mike Carter. Sister, Micaia Carter. And Ella Sponseller. Next, number 74, Juan Wei. He lettered for two years. Escorted by father, Juan Wei. Brother, Mike Wei. Mother, Lisa Herzen. And sister, Anaya Wei. Seniors, there's only one thing left to do. Leave your mark forever. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it one more time for the cheerleading and football senior class of 2024.
I saw that, but I didn't quite understand it. Well, Michigan's under investigation for trying to scouting the oh. I guess apparently when they went to their work, you are not supposed to be scouting the parents for their students. Hmm. And they were scouting all the scouts and supposedly stealing signs from other schools. So it's like a legend of what you're going to Okay. So, 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 right. <laughs> well, here's what I, because I saw that, and I'm like, well, like I get base stuff, right? The signs were right here. But in football, they really are doing them right in front of you. Obviously, you'll come to your... your mm -hmm. I thought it was taking a little while, too, but that's I don't know anything about it. You know, talking about, you know, the new recipes. <laughs> Mullenkopf Stadium, get on your feet and make some noise for your more cheap. Ladies and gentlemen, we proudly present the gold standard of Northeast Ohio, the Morty Hardy Raider Marching Band!
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of our school alma mater, the gold and white. Pre-game wouldn't be the same without the official song of the state of Ohio. Here is Hang On Snoopy. Senior Raiders of 2024, you know about this rich championship history we have. 
You know the deep list of legends that came before you that one time put their cleats on as seniors and played their final regular season game at this historic Ohio football field. Tonight, this city, your city, your town, is here 100% to witness you leave. You're marked forever. At Mollenkopf Stadium. So tonight, seniors, you look in those stadiums, you look back in your heart to every mentor, coach, family member, aunt, uncle, dad, mom. You look back at the past 17 years, and you pour your heart on this field tonight for every single last one of them that made you who you are today.
Let them know that I'm a champion. Come with this history, man. Let them know that I'm a champion. Restraint is a dub city thing. This time I go get a ring. Let them know that I'm a champion. We on the road, but we don't talk to the phone. Game time, game mode. Let them know that I'm a champion. Never fly the bench. I am a player, boy. Got the eye of the tiger, but I'm a raider, boy. Turned up, I'm hoping you feel the same way. This is only practice. Imagine me on game day. You can try, but it ain't no stopping it. Shut the critics up, put a sock in it. Rest in peace, Corey Stringer. He a poor steel. My destination is great. It's Paul Warfield. Yeah, small city doing big things. Dub City, my city on the big screen. Long time coming. We want the whole thing. Never let them take the pride. It's the home team. Whether you balling on the block or balling when you block. Throw your W's up, really, we all we got. They ain't never give us nothing, this one that you took. Fix this one for the books. Hey, take a seat, I promise you have a seat. The box for the play.
Good evening, football fans. Welcome to Molokov Stadium. It's week 10, the final week of the fastest 10 weeks in sports. High school football season, the regular season comes to a close tonight as your four and five Harding Raiders play host to the five and three Austin Town Fitch Falcons. As always, on hand with me tonight, Tom Bird here and Eddie, Eddie Colbert, ready to bring you all the action. These teams have, with the expanded playoffs, both these teams are set for postseason play next week. And Eddie, there's still a lot on the line. You got momentum, you got home field advantage possibly riding on this one. No, absolutely, Tom. I mean, you, you start out the season, you're looking to win a state championship. The only way you can do that is get into the playoffs. And this team has put itself in a position to do it. Uh, a lot of ups and downs during the season, but they persevered, put themselves in a position to continue playing, and that's all you can ask for. Play the team in front of you, keep on winning. They have an opportunity tonight to get a home game, possibly in the playoffs, possibly here right at Molokov Stadium. This is what you this is what you practice for in the summer. This is what you do the offseason for, to put yourself in a position to, to, to project yourself onto a state championship, and this team has done it. The first step comes on a good warm-up tonight with an excellent Austin Town pitch team to, to get themselves ready for the first round of the playoffs. Harding set to receive the opening kickoff. Number five, Javante Jones is back deep along with number 22, Ryan Powell. They are the deep backs. Talk about the special teams. We've seen some great things come out of this Harding team on the special teams. Uh, we talk about the three three phases of football, this being one of them. Uh, we, we saw some teams try to come out quickly, try to get that upper advantage. Harding's got to be careful of leaving that left side kind of open here. We'll see if they spread out. Always be careful of watching a team like Fitch to start out with something like an onside kick, to try to turn the tables early here uh, before the game starts. That kick is going to drive Javante Jones back. It's going to go in the end zone. Number 47, Anthony Ruggles with the big boot to open us up. Harding will start off first and 10 at the 20 yard line. They'll be moving from north to south or left to right on your screen this evening. Tom, something to keep an eye on. We've talked all year about how uh, haven't really seen a lot of the opposing team special teams coming to fruition. But right there, that's probably the first kicker I've seen all year, including last week versus Maslin of a kicker that's able to put that ball in the end zone. If they can continue to do that all night, that's going to take away some of those speedsters back deep to receive for the uh, Harding Raiders tonight. Number 13, the junior, Chaz Coleman. He will be starting off at quarterback this evening. Last week we saw a lot of back and forth between Chaz and Drew. Starting out with Chaz here, the athlete. Let's see what he Coleman can do. back, a pass over the middle, and that pass was knocked loose and that will fall incomplete. I believe he was looking for Kamari Adams out there. That's gonna bring up second down and 10 for the Raiders. Yeah, I like what I saw from the Raiders there, getting the ball out of the quarterback's hand quick there on a slant pattern. Being able to give him more time to uh, read that defense, get it out quickly, get hit his players in a position to make a play, get him in space, get him upfield for and move the chains. Three receivers down here on the near side. So if they've got some clock issues here. They're going to reset that uh, play clock back to 25. And there's a handoff up the middle and not a lot of room right there. So a little issue all year. We've been seeing some issues with that uh, shotgun snap. A lot of times we've seen the quarterback have to play shortstop back to the field, the ground ball. That time it was a floater. Once again, throwing that timing off with the running back in the uh, line. Got to be able to, just like practice, got to keep everything in motion, keep everything fluent. Uh, we'll see what happens as we, this game goes on with that, that quarterback uh, center exchange with the shotgun. Chaz Coleman goes back. Coleman is going to be sacked for a big loss. They're going to stop his progress at about the six-yard line. That's going to bring up a fourth down and long early on, and the Raiders are going to be forced to punt from well within their own territory. Yeah, obviously not what the Raiders were looking at to come out with their first offensive possession. I like what I saw there, though. I mean, last week we saw a lot of pressure coming from that Maslin 
uh, front three that they ran there. You wanted to get the ball out of the quarterback's hands quick. I like what I saw when they started out with that quick slant. Look for them to keep on working on that uh, as this game continues to progress to move the ball upfield. Jake Doherty, the senior, in the punt out of his own end zone. High spiraling kick, gets a lot of yardage on, drives the receiver back to the 50-yard line. Looking for some room, he's got it. And he'll come down about the Raider 41-yard line. That was number three, Dan Evans the third for Fitch on that return. Saw Dan Evans, Evans the third there. Looked like he had the corner there as he as he was uh, on that, that great punt by Jake there to drive the, him back to the 50-yard line. You saw that slide on the end. Kind of interesting. We'll see how both teams play this tonight. Knowing that both of them are in the playoffs, we'll see what these players are willing to do. Knowing that next week is the game that really counts as they get into the playoffs, are you going to see the coaches start to sit some of the starters, take them out early to make sure they preserve their starters for next week's playoff game? Number nine, Deshaun Vaughn, the quarterback. There's a quick out to Dan Evans. And Evans is going to be met immediately for no gain. Brings up a second down and 10. Great job there by 22, Ryan Powell. We've seen teams all year run that, that screen pass to the outside where they like to run the trips there with the wide receivers. Let those two get out there, get a, get a block going on the outside linebacker in the safety. One man to beat. That time, Ryan Powell stepped up, made the play for uh, no gain for the Austin Town Fitch. And handoff is to DeAndre Richard. And Richard isn't going to find any room either. That's going to bring up a third down and nine at the 40. And so far, the Raider defense is stepping up. All year long, we saw the Raiders. They've, they've, they've acknowledged the undersized uh, um, stature of, of that front line. So they went to that three-man front, went to a more quick athletic front three. They've caused havoc all year. The Raider defense is something that's, that's really kept them in a lot of games this year, and they've done it by utilizing the athleticism by the front three to be able to get around some of those big, bulky offensive linemen and make the play. Quarterback Deshaun Vaughn getting his signals. It is third down and nine for the Falcons. They are at the Raider 40-yard line. Game just underway, under nine and a half minutes play in the first quarter. Raiders three and out on their first possession, and this is the first possession of the night for the Fitch Falcons. Vaughn all by himself in that backfield, drops back the pass. He's under some pressure, trying to find some room, trying to extend the play. He's Vaughn is running way back, gets the pass off, finds a receiver on the far sideline, and again, a little game. That's going to bring up a fourth down and long for the Fitch Falcons. Trying to get the number over there. See the quarterback under a lot of pressure under that front three there. Great play by that left uh, corner there, open field. Uh, receiver had a lot of room after that. Excellent open field tackle there by the left corner. Given that field position, this looks like that's going to be a four down territory for the Fitch Falcons. Deshaun Vaughn, the quarterback, is set a little bit deeper like he's getting set to punt. And as always, when oh, a quarterback's yep. back, they're going to have to watch it. And he is going to take that punt, trying to pin the Raiders back. That punt is fielded. And that tackle is broken outside. And a big run back. There's a quick flag there that looks like that's going to be some type of a legal procedure, possibly on the offense. That nice return should stand for the Raiders. We'll see what the referees have for the call. Harris Coleman Bay taking a risk and scooping that ball up well deep, right around a 10-yard line, breaks the tackle and gets the Raiders fantastic field position to start their second series. Harris Coleman Bay, one of the stands out on the special teams this year. Looks like they're going over to the Harding bench to discuss this. That flag came out immediately. You would think that that penalty is either going to be something about a sideline warning or possibly something against the Falcons. And the officials are That's marching to this off against the Falcons. Against Fitch, number four, five yard penalty, first down. So the five yards and the big return for Aris Coleman Bay 
gets the Raiders out of what appeared to be a big hole, and now all of a sudden they are out at the 48-yard line to start this series of plays. A great, great field position for the Raider offense to start off their second possession. Chaz Coleman, he's got Antonio Smith lined up to his right. Two receivers up on top. Man coverage. That handoff is to Smith. Smith breaks it outside. One man to beat. Picks up a couple. Picks up about five on that play. Brings up a second down and five. Antonio showing the patience there. Took that up the two hole. Realized there was nothing there. Had the ability to bounce it outside. He's got that track speed. Uh, and wasn't able to keep contained there. Going to move that up the field for four yards. Let's call this second down and six. And the handoff again to Smith. The Smith again trying to bounce it outside. Gets a couple. Third down and four coming up for the Warren Raiders. Talked about Antonio Smith all year with the speed. Uh, doesn't necessarily have the weight, but I'm going to tell you, this kid runs like he's 225. Never, You're not going to find a harder runner in this league than number 10. Antonio Smith really just goes out there, gives it all on every play. All it takes is for him to make one linebacker miss, and it's off to the races. Coleman with the keeper. He's going to lose a couple. There's a flag coming in. Could be a face mask. That was a late penalty. You wouldn't see that being a holding penalty, but we'll see what they call. Waiting on the call. The Falcons are backing up. At the end of the run, you have five yard face yep. mask. Number 50. Incidental defense. there. We'll take it. Five yard Move penalty. the sticks. As a result, it's going to be a first down. Face max penalty gives the Raiders a first down. They are in Fitch territory at the 42 yard line. Coleman steps back to pass. Looking out to that corner and looking for Eris Coleman Bay over there. Gets it out in front of him just a little bit too far. Brings up a second down and 10 for Harding. Yeah, Eris had a couple steps on his uh, defender there. Chaz is not able to get out, get it out to him, but I like to see how they're working that intermediate. You know, you want to push those, you know, run a couple fly patterns, push those safeties back, get those linebackers back in order to be able to work that middle as the game goes on. Coleman again back to pass. He finds his man. That was Najee Jones. Caught it and slipped down, but it's a gain of about five. Third down and five coming up for the Raiders. Raider offense in good position here. Third and five, third and manageable inside the 40-yard line. I wouldn't be surprised if the Raiders are in four-down territory here. See Chaz checking the, checking the play here. Chaz has got some starts here, understands football. Right now, you just want to get a couple yards. If you can get it all, take it. But if all you need is a couple yards, I'm pretty confident this is going to be four down territory. Coleman finds his man in a big grab over the middle. That's a first down Raiders. Harris Coleman Bay with the grab. My mistake, that was Kamari Adams. Big catch for Kamari Adams over the middle. First down, Raiders. Kamari Adams all year been a nice possession receiver for the quarterback. Not afraid to go over the middle. Don't see those alligators come, alligator arms come out. Not afraid to take that hit. You saw it right there, extended. Able to uh, extend the downs for the Raiders. There's the handoff to Smith. Smith pounds ahead. He'll get a couple. He'll get about four off of that. Gets it inside the 25-yard line. Early on, like to see the nice mix of run and pass that this Raider offense is coming to the uh, coming to the line of scrimmage with, really keeping that defense early on their heels, not being able to guess the plays, uh, uh, and really keeping that defense uh, guessing, moving the sticks consistent, consistently. If Smith three yards in that carry, it's second down and seven. Coleman back to pass again under some pressure. Trying to extend the play, gets the pass off, and that ball is going to be picked off by Fitch at the 25-yard line. That was number 33, Dylan Crone, on the interception for Austin Town Fitch. 
You see the pressure coming from the right end there from the uh, Falcon uh, defense. Had Chaz run into his strong side there to the right. Uh, just made the mistake. Very difficult to throw the ball across your body like that. He took a chance there. That, that's the only issue with being an athlete. Athletes always believe they can make plays. Uh, when it works out, it looks great for the highlight films. When it doesn't, you throw those easy interceptions. Right now, uh, not bad field position, but asking the Raider defense to step up once again to get a three and out and get the Falcon uh, offense off the field. Falcons take over on their own 35-yard line off the Dylan Crone interception. Fitch with three receivers up on top. Deshaun Vaughn at quarterback. There's the handoff to Richard, and Richard has met at the line of scrimmage for a one-yard gain. And early on, really liked the aggressiveness of the defense. Watching those front three do what they do. Watching those linebackers step up, meet the runner in the hole for minimum gains. Second down and nine for Austin Town Fitch. See a zero coverage here. Vaughn keeps it, rolls out to his right. He's got a man downfield. Wide open. That was number 16. Dominic Perry wide open on that play. Big gain for the Fish Falcons. Yeah, that time, number 17, Donovan McCoy got caught with his eyes in the backfield there. Receiver able to break free there. Nice passing, nice throw and catch by the quarterback and receiver. Going to set Fitch up nice at the 20-yard line. It's a first down for Fitch at the 20. Looking for number eight, Allen Hill Jr. That ball falls incomplete, brings up a second down and 10 at the 20. Yeah, good coverage there by the cornerback. That's number 25, sophomore LaMarcus Probit. Last week, although a loss by the uh, Raiders, big game by sophomore LaMarcus uh, Probit. I want to say he had about 120 yards, two touchdowns against the Maslin defense. Second down, hand 10. That handoff is DeAndre Richard, and he gets nothing. If anything, he's going to lose a yard or two. Brings up a third down and long for the Fitch Falcons. Yeah, early here in the uh, first quarter, those front three really uh, getting a lot of pressure on the front five against the Austintown uh, Falcons. We'll see how that plays out throughout the game. But right now, just dominating the line of scrimmage uh, by the front three of the Raider defense. Third down and 11 for the Falcons. Vaughn back to pass. He finds Richard out in the flat. Richard breaks a tackle. He gets close to a first down. That ball is loose. Looks like that's our ball. And it's Raider football at the 11 yard line. See a big hit by Ryan Powell there. Not giving up on the play. You see the swarm by the defense there to recover the ball. It, it, you know, we start the year off, you talk about the fastest 10 weeks in football. We were just sweating a few weeks ago. <laughs> Come out here tonight, you know that temperature's a little down. You get your hands cold, a little stiff. You got a little bit of drizzle out there tonight. That ball becomes a little slippery. Raiders able to force the early turnover as Austin Town Fitch had a great uh, drive going that's going to be stalled by that Raider defense, giving them an opportunity to uh, stop that drive and get some points on the board themselves. And to think Ryan Powell was almost off the field. Coaches were frantically waving him back onto the yeah, field. Yeah. <laughs> First and 10 Raiders at their own 10-yard line. There's the handoff up the middle. Six-yard gain. We have a new running back trying to see what number that one was. And Ryan Powell Look, after the big hit. Big run, give the Raiders some good yardage. Our first down brings up a second down and four. You know, Harding's been blessed these uh, past four, five, six years with multiple yeah, running backs. Uh, Ryan Powell started out the year, him and Antonio in the backfield. They've went from Javante Jones to Izzy Reynolds. Uh, good to see the big body back, back there again, powering ahead for a gain of six. Powell again. And this time, maybe get a yard on that play. Bring up a third down and three. Third 
Yeah, it looks like that's going to bring up a third and three. You've got the dynamics of uh, Chaz Coleman back there. You know, he's shown he's got a rocket for an arm, but he's also able to uh, tuck that ball when need be, make a couple moves, get upfield for the first down. We'll see what the Raiders elect to do on this uh, third down and three. Third and three for the Raiders. Just over two minutes to play in the first quarter. No score yet. Whistle before that play. So like the Raiders Harding, want to talk about it. Harding's going to call timeout and discuss this one. Both teams trading turnovers here on these, on their second series of plays. Yeah, big play there by the Raiders, though, to come up with that fumble recovery. Obviously, you saw the momentum shifting as, uh, you know, Austin Town came up with a uh, crucial interception there of uh, Chaz Coleman. They are able to drive the ball down inside the 20-yard line. Big hit by Ryan Powell. Uh, jarred the ball loose, ended up with the Raiders ball there on, on what looked to be a at least a, a, a three points coming out of that uh, drive. Now the Raiders have an opportunity, third and three here, uh, roughly around the 25-yard line to move the sticks and keep this ball moving. with four receivers and a cluster over here on the near side. Coleman, back at quarterback, looks like he's all by himself in that backfield. Like Austin Town wants to talk and about it now. Fitch doesn't like this setup, so they're gonna discuss that one. Yeah, you know, you can watch film all year. We're into the, uh, we're into the 10th game of the year, uh, but you know, every coach tries to throw a little wrinkle. You know, obviously both these teams know they're going to the playoffs, don't wanna to show too much. Obviously, whoever they play next uh, week's gonna get the film, uh, but a little wrinkle Austin Town wasn't ready for. They decided to take a timeout on a crucial third and three. Uh, would love to force a, a punt here to give themselves good field position. Two eleven remaining in a scoreless first quarter. Both teams trading turnovers, and now both teams trading timeouts as we get set to resume play. Harding's gonna keep that uh, four-man diamond set up down here on the near side. Coleman again. Yeah, a lot Coleman's of options the here. Backfield. A lot of options coming out of this set. Even running them all deep. He finds Aris Coleman Bay. Get up trying field. to get some blockers. Gets a few yards. There. Looks like Aris Coleman Bay is going to get the first down. He gets that ball out to almost the 25 yard line. It's first and 10 Raiders. Yeah, key to that play is how quickly Chaz got that ball out. Took a good snap. Wide receivers got the blocks out in front of Aris Coleman Bay. Nothing east and west, all north and south there for Aris Coleman Bay. Able to move the sticks for a first down for the Raiders. And it gets the Raiders out of the shadow of their own end zone. Little breathing room. Ryan Powell steps in again at running back. He's lined up to Chaz Coleman's right. And Powell's going to get the give. Powell finds a hole. Still on his feet. And another first down Harding. You talk about Ryan Powell, senior 6'1", got listed at 215. You look at the yards after first contact there. I mean, just running over number one, Alex Hill, 6'5", 205 linebacker. Just lowered his shoulder, put the put the pads to him, able to drive forward for a nice game for the Raider offense. First and 10 Raiders at their 36. And again, it's Ryan Powell. And again, he finds a little bit of room, gets some good first down yardage out to about the 42 yard line. Looks like a five yard pickup, brings up second down and five for Harding. You know, we've been watching Ryan Powell run the ball since he was a sophomore. Always had that big body. Nice to see him lower that shoulder and just drive forward, fall forward for an additional two, three yards there. And 
And again, it's Ryan Powell, and this time Fitch meets him, but Powell still manages to move that pile ahead two or three yards, brings up a third down and short. Third and two upcoming for the Raiders. Third and two approaching the 50-yard uh, line. When you've got a quarterback like Chaz back there, who not only has shown the ability to throw the ball and make some reads, but also being able to use that athleticism to get upfield when need be. These are excellent positions for this offense to be in, and, and, and only makes it even better when you got a quarterback like Chaz back there that's a dual threat of throwing the ball as well as running it if need be. Chaz is going to keep this one, and Chaz Coleman gets it ahead for another Raider first down out to the 49-yard line. Just talked about Chaz's ability to run the ball there with that athleticism, but let's not forget he's listed 6'3", 200 pounds, not afraid to go up that five hole there, take up a little bit of contact, lower those shoulders to move the... Uh, to, to, to move the sticks. And that's the end of the first quarter. No score here at Molokov Stadium. Senior night, last regular season game of the year. Harding, first down near midfield when play resumes for the second quarter. You yeah, can't ask for much more out of that Raiders team overall. I mean, look, Austin Town's a good team. Uh, coming off of, uh, you know, a, a season where they've beaten a team called uh, St. Ignatius. That obviously does a lot for the, the morale. Now, St. Ignatius, I think, one win on the season. Uh, but when you look at their schedule, St. Ignatius is, uh, they're, they're, they're playing the world beaters of, uh, of uh, high school football. But anytime you're able to put a W in the column against a team like Ignatius, that obviously does a lot for the morale moving forward. And uh, they come out here, they're experienced, tough loss against Ursuline. Ursuline looks like they're pretty stacked this year. Uh, tough game we had against them this year. Look for them to go far in their, in their region, uh, in their division. But uh, Austin Town comes in with a lot of confidence. Hardy coming off of that tough loss to a, just a dominant uh, Maslin team last, last week. But I tell you, after you play a game like that, after you kind of feel that kind of pressure, you come into everything else after that, and everything kind of seems a little bit easier for you. So we'll see how uh, Harding responds. Here's 0-0 going into the second quarter. First and 10 at the Raider 49-yard line to open up the second quarter. And there's a handoff up the middle. That looks like that was Javante Jones. There's a late flag coming in. Jones got no yards on that play. Looks like that could be another face mask there. Late flag. Looks like the initial signal. We'll see if that's the 15 variety or the accidental five. Personal foul. Number 44. Defense. Face mask. 15 yards at the end of the run. Going to result That's in the first move foul. the Raiders ahead 15 well into Fitch territory. The second face mask call against the Falcons this evening. That takes the ball up to the Fitch 36. Excellent opportunity after the uh, penalty on Fitch there. Looks like Fitch is coming out in that single safety. Safety's got to make a decision. On who he's going to double there, he's got balls Coleman away. looking downfield, trying to find a man on the sideline. Ah. That pass will fall incomplete, bringing up a second down and 10. Looks like he was looking for that one-on-one -on -one coverage out there to the far side. Denaji Jones had a step on him. Give number three, Dan Evans, credit for hanging in there, getting a hand out there to uh, cause some interference there. That could have easily been six for the uh, Harding Raiders offense. Second down and 10 at the Fitch 36 for the Harding Raiders. Javante Jones taking his turn at running back on this series of plays. He's in there lined up just behind Chaz Coleman. And Jones finds a hole, and Jones has broken loose! Javante Jones, 36 yards for a Raider touchdown! Javante Jones, all it took was to make one man miss. Austin Town came out with eight men in the box. Looks like the number 12 there, Kylan Foster had an opportunity, went high on, on uh, Jones. Jones able to shake that off, make one man miss, and was off to the races. Harding with an early 6-0 lead against the Falcons.
Jake Doherty on to attempt the extra point to make this a 7-0 ball game. That kick is up and good, and it is seven to nothing. Harding Raiders with 11.27 to play in the first half. Javante Jones brings it loose from 36 yards. A great job by the front five of the Harding Raider offense there. You saw as the Falcons came out, eight in the box. You watch how the quarterback always starts his cadence, stops, looks over at the sideline. You could easily expect the coaches to change the play there with eight in the box, but no, they were able to just run that play, catch Austin Town off guard. Like a guy comes in high, makes one man miss, but we got some burners. All it took was that one man to miss. He was off to the races. Great blocks by the wide receivers to keep those corners and safeties uh, occupied. And early lead here in the early in the second quarter for the uh, Raider off for the Raider team. Number two, Davion Pritchard. Number three, Dan Evans back deep for the Falcons. And as he has for the last four seasons, Jake Doherty getting set to put this ball in play. Jake Doherty Sr. playing his last regular season game here at Molokov, and he has been a fixture. Seems like he's been here forever. Oh, absolutely. We talk about all the time, you know, the stability and the special teams uh, of what Jake's done, but can't overemphasize. Not only is he a great athlete on the field, but uh, even a better person off the field. Little squib kick, that ball is live at the 30 yard line. And that's covered up by number six, Devin Phillips. Fitch will set up first to 10, looks like their own 31 yard line. Looks like a late flag coming in here. See what this call is. Late flag, looked like it was after the play. Didn't seem to be any extracurricular activity by either side here. It'll be interesting to see what the call is here by the officials. And they're, so they're picking gonna... that one up. First and 10 Falcons. Ball's at the 29 yard line. Sean Vaughn gets a screen out to Richard. He makes the catch, but he slips and falls, and that's gonna be about a three or four yard loss on that play. And DeAndre Richards, freshman, passed a little bit behind him, couldn't really get his uh, feet situated, had a couple blockers out in front of him. So that's gonna result in a four yard loss for the uh, Falcon offense. Going to back him up behind the sticks here. Put that Raider defense in a position to be able to possibly send a couple of those linebackers from different angles. Really confuse the quarterback. We'll see what, uh, what Fitch comes out here to do. Second down to 14. Austin Town Fitch, their own 25-yard line. There's a jet sweep around the corner. That's Dan Evans. He gets a few yards back. Maybe back to about the original line of scrimmage. They're going to mark him at about the 30. That's a third down and nine coming up for the Fitch Falcons. Decent, uh, decent gain there, six yards by the Fitch Falcons. Going to set them up here with a third and nine. See what kind of pressure the uh, uh, Raider defense puts on the quarterback here. Try to get that ball up his hands early. Vaughn back to pass over the middle. Finds his man. That's going to be a first down, Fitch. I believe again, that was number 16, Dominic Perry. He had the big catch in the last series. Dominic Perry. Using his hands right there, tough to do on a night like this when it's cold and wet outside. Able to use his hands to corral that ball, move the stick, sticks for the Austin Town Fitch Falcons, give them a fresh set of downs. Here about nine yards short of the 50-yard uh, line. Fitch gets it out to the 41-yard line where it's first and 10. 
Coming up on 9.30 to play in the half. Harding on a seven to nothing lead right now. And that handoff and Vaughn keeps it. Raiders caught that pickup of about two, maybe three on that. Looks like they're gonna give him two out to about the 43 yard line. Brings up a second down and eight. Yeah, not much going on that play for Fitch. Can't tell if that was a design draw, maybe a broken play, but regardless, Ryan Powell was able to sniff it out there, hold the Fitch Falcons to a short gain of two, bring up this second and eight. As we've seen all year, very comfortable with leaving these corners in the one-on-one -on -one coverage. Single deep safety for the Raiders. Vaughn back to pass again and gets the pass out. And that ball is almost picked off. Looking for Dominic Perry on the near sideline. And that was proven on the coverage. Had his hands on it. Brings up a third down and eight. They said all year, uh, Coach Arnold's been very comfortable with leaving his corners out there on an island. Showed great confidence in him. By doing that, that allows you to be able to not only send those three, but to send those linebackers from different angles uh, with that confidence that he has in his secondary. It's like I see Antonio Smith coming in on defense. Coming in on this passing situation. Vaughn back to pass, he's under some pressure. He's gonna keep the ball. Vaughn is going to be tackled short of the first down. It's going to be a fourth down and four. It remains to be seen what Fitch tries to do here, but this is a, at least at the beginning, a punting situation. We'll see what they do. Brian Powell with the with the pursuit there. Looks like Austintown is going to bring on their punt unit, trying to pin Harding deep and play the field position game. And remember, their quarterback, Deshaun Vaughn, is also the punter, so... You know, Anything goes at this point. Yeah, we've seen that also where you put the quarterback as your holder on the special teams. Just keeps that defense on there, uh, keeps them on their feet. Looks like Harding wants to talk about this. Harding calls a timeout with 7.55 left in the half. That's their second timeout of the half. Harding on a 7 to nothing lead, courtesy of a 36-yard scamper by Javante Jones. Austin Town Fitch looking at a fourth and four once they come out of this timeout. As we have a small break here in the action, Tom, uh, take the opportunity Sunday, October 29th from three to five, the city of Warren will be having its uh, annual Halloween parade. Starting down at City Hall, Perkins Park, going to make its way through the uh, down, beautiful downtown area at Courthouse Square. Uh, if you got some kids or if you're just a kid at heart, uh, find your way down there on Sunday, October 29th. Get some candy and uh, enjoy the, hol the kickoff to the official holiday season. Fourth and four, Fitch is set up to punt. And Vaughn is going to punt, not a very long punt. And there is Coleman Bay doing the smart thing and letting that ball roll out of bounds. That's going to give Harding decent field position. It looks like they're marking that just right around a 28-yard line. So Harding with a decent starting spot here. Harris scooped up that last putt, got Harding out of the out of a hole. Thought better of it this time, let the ball trickle out of bounds. So Harding with the ball, 7.49 to play. And Harding with a great opportunity here. Defense, as, as they have most of the year, kind of shown up, really uh, uh, kept the uh, team in, into these games. 7 nothing here, some momentum on their side. Look to see them try to identify some one-on-one -on -one coverage, stretch this defense a little bit, take a shot downfield, see if they can get one quick. That looks like Ryan Powell's back in at running back for this series. And Powell's gonna get the call. He'll move the pile ahead for a couple. Brings up, looks like maybe a third down and seven. Third, let's call it second down and eight. Yeah, I tried to pull a couple of the defenders with that fake jet sweep to the right side with Ayers Coleman Bay coming back with the counter there to Ryan Powell. 
Defense able to uh, rally to the ball to hold him to a short gain of two. Single safety by the Falcons here. Let's see if they take a shot. That's Najee Jones in motion. Jazz Coleman back to pass over the middle. He finds his man. That's Ayers Coleman Bay. Ayers Coleman Bay breaks a tackle, and that's a first down out near midfield for the Raiders. Ayers Coleman Bay coming over the middle there. Offensive line giving the quarterback, Chaz Coleman, plenty of time to, to, for his receivers to set up. We've been saying Harris' name all season, Tom. Not afraid to do the dirty work on special teams or the offense, going over the middle, expecting those hits, able to move the sticks for the Raider offense. Cole, Chaz Coleman keeps that one. He might have picked up a yard or two, gets it out to the 50. That'll bring up second down and eight once again at the 50-yard line. A lot of confusion on that play. Players going uh, X, Y, and Z uh, directions. I think my eyes were at the top of the field. Uh, give that Fitch defense a lot of credit for being able to maintain their positions and make that play for a short game. 6.20 and counting here in the first half. Harding trying to add to its 7 to nothing lead. And Coleman drops back. Pressure the line. There you go. Goes got down him. Field. Got him. He's got a man open inside the 15-yard line. First down, Raiders. Looked like that was uh, number eight, Kamari Adams again. Give a lot of credit to the offensive line for giving Chaz the time to be able to set that uh, play up there. Gave him all the time in the world. He was, Able to break free, Chaz had the time to find and put it on the spot. Big play for the Raiders, going to set up a first down inside the 10-yard line of the Fitch Falcons. All the way down to the Fitch 8-yard line on that pass play from Chaz Coleman to Kamari Adams. And the Raiders at first and goal. And that's Ryan Powell trying. He gets it inside the 5, up to about the 3. Second down and goal. Raider offensive line really controlling the line of scrimmage early here. You see the quick back up to the line. One more time to Powell. Powell bounces it outside. Touchdown, Raiders! Great job by the Raiders offense. Great job by the Raiders offensive line. You see the right side of the line pulls to the left there. Catching Fitch off guard, Ryan Powell takes that in for the easy score. Going to put the Raiders up here early, 13-0, awaiting the extra point by Jake Doherty. So two quick scores by the Raiders, and they've opened up quite a lead here. Jake Doherty set to try to make it 14-0. And that kick is blocked. So the score will remain 13 to nothing. You know, you go back a couple plays to what set that touchdown up, that deep pass by Chaz to, uh, to, to Nate. And uh, really like how Chaz got to the outside, didn't just set up. He started to pressure the line of scrimmage, made those safeties, make a decision. And that was able to give Nate that step that he needed. Chaz able to throw that ball up, put some air under it, let, let his receiver get under it. I'm sorry, Kamari Adams, let him get underneath that ball for the big play to set up Ryan Powell for that touchdown. Given that Fitch is going to get the ball to start the second half, that is exactly what the Raiders were looking for on that possession. And still plenty of time on the clock, so the defense for Harding will need to step up one more time. I'm sure Fitch is going to be looking to get one in here before the half, knowing that they get the ball back. No, absolutely. You know, you went into this game and you knew it was kind of a toss-up, both teams knowing that they're going to make the playoffs. Uh, you wondered, you know, which one of these teams were going to start looking ahead uh, to Week 11 and not focusing on Week 10. Right now, Raiders know they have an excellent opportunity not only to win this game, but to possibly get themselves a home playoff game here at Molenkoff Stadium. Yeah. 
Another squib type kick. The ball is finally scooped up around the 10 yard line. And a big tackle that around the 10 yard line. Number, two, number five, Javante Jones scored the first touchdown for the Raiders. That squib kick caused the, the uh, Falcons some issue there. Javante Jones able to get down there, break down, make a great tackle inside the 10 yard line. Gonna push the Fish Falcons back deep to start off this possession. Flag down back there around a five yard line. So I'm wondering if maybe he got his hands face up mask. around the face mask on that one. Yeah, Seems looks to like be the Raiders. The penalty of choice this evening. Are they waving it off? After the play, unsportsmanlike. Seven on the kicking team. They 15 call it yards unsportsmanlike. First half. A little bit too much celebration after the play there. Want to keep your composure. Came down, made a great play. Coach Arnold's out there having a conversation. Want to be able to show some emotion out here. That 15 yard penalty moves the ball out to the 22 yard line. Gives Fitch a little bit more elbow room than they had initially. First and 10, Austin Town Fitch. 5.17 to play here in the first half. Ball with the handoff to DeAndre Richard. And Richard is dragged down in the backfield for a loss. Looks like once again, that might have been Ryan Powell coming from that inside line back. Nope, that was Javante Jones again. Just called his name. Exact, looked like the exact same tackle that he made on the kickoff return. Javante Jones coming out here uh, possessed uh, on this uh, final game of the uh, regular season here at Molenkoff Stadium. Second down and 13, Gall goes back to the 20. That pass is complete to Richard. We're going to get a hold. There's a flag in the backfield. Richard late. got up first, uh, close to first down, but there is a flag on the play. Yeah, that was a late flag. The hold came early. It looked like the ref was waiting to see if that was going to be a gain or not. Might have, might have not thrown it if he wouldn't have got past the, the sticks. But looks like that should be an early hold call on the Falcons. Holding. Number three, offense. Ten-yard penalty. Repeat second down. Penny call to number three, Dan Evans for the Falcons. Out here trying to get a block for Richard on that, on that screenplay. It's gonna push him back behind the sticks here. That's gonna move it to about a second and 20. Talk about all year, you know, for the Raiders. Those, uh, those type of penalties, especially those holding calls, they're, they're such drive killers. You find yourself in a first and 20, second and 20, just really limits the playbook for the offensive coordinator of the other side, allows that defense to pin their ears back and just take off after the quarterback. Penalty moves the ball back to the 13 yard line, second down and 20, Vaughn back to pass. Being forced out of the pocket, he's gonna keep this one, he's got some room over there. He's gonna take it out of bounds around the 20 yard line, still gonna bring up a third down and long, third and about 12. And now there's some extracurricular activity. The flags are flying on that far sideline. There's another flag and another and another. And now things are breaking down over there. And you hate to see that. It's been such a, such a well-played ball game for a quarter and a half. And now all of a sudden the emotions are starting. You know, we, it's football. There's a little pushing and shoving. I mean, you don't like to see things like that. Glad to see the coaches on both sides were able to get that kind of contained. The officials threw the flag. Uh, glad to see that it got contained. You know, these are two teams. They've got a lot of history with each other. Uh, you know, different counties, but, uh, you know, we've seen these games go back and forth here. Obviously, Fitch coming in here uh, with a considerable record uh, versus Harding. Harding's coming out, punched him in the mouth a couple times, went up 13 nothing. And you can see how those emotions started to run over there. But glad to see the officials and the coaches. And I'll give some credit to the players, you know, for getting this all back contained. Get out here and settle it between the settle it between the white lines. A lot of laundry on the field, so the officials are going to take a moment or two and sort all this out. There'll be some offsetting personal fouls, I'm sure, and. 
Yeah, I didn't see a late hit. I didn't see a, a, a flag come in for a late hit. It just looked like it happened on Austin Town sideline. You know, it was their quarterback. Obviously, you're, you're, you're a little overprotective, almost like your little brother, you know, when the, when the quarterback's over there. There was a hit on the sideline. Obviously, Austin Town took a little exception to it. A little pushing and shoving, ended up in a little more pushing and shoving. You know, if we could just keep it at that, we'll just keep on playing football. Well, if they were both looking to week 11 when the game started, I think they're both looking at week 10 I, now. I, they, I think they're in the present yes. at this moment. <laughs> Officials still sorting that out. I think we're moments away from getting the official call on this. We'll find out what, what is happening. We have two fouls on the play. Both dead ball, unsportsmanlike against Fitch. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike against Harding. Penalties will offset. Third down. Penalties offset, and the good news is nobody gets tossed change, early. Correction. Change both of them. To That's going to bring up again. Should be a. Third down and long for the Falcons over there, somewhere around the 20-yard line. You know, I'll always maintain you want to settle it between the lines. Um, little pushing and shoving here or there. You know, the, the referees and the coaches, they got control of it quick. Uh, bring it back in between the lines. You know, if, like I said, if you were looking at week 11, well, now you're definitely looking at week 10. The game's right here. Let's let's uh, let's settle it between the lines. So it looks like Fitch is going to have the ball at about the 27-yard line. It's a third down and six play coming up. 4-13 remaining in the first half. Harding on top of this one, 13 to nothing. The officials look like they're having a little get together with the captains down there. Making sure things uh, don't escalate any more than they have. Now, two two teams here, a lot of pride, a lot of history here. Uh, as I talk about, you play for the the name on the front of the shirt, not on the name for the name on the back of the shirt. Go out here, represent your school, compete between the lines. Cover two. Watch the middle of the field. Oh, Vaughn back to pass. Vaughn takes off again. He's short. And he's going to slide down about a yard short of the first down. That's going to bring up a fourth down and one for Fitch. Interesting situation for Hart, for the uh, Falcons here. Under four minutes left, down 13-0. They're going to have a fourth and short. Harding's been able to control the line of scrimmage on the offense and defensive side. And like clockwork, here comes the punting unit for the uh, – Fitch Falcons. So Fitch not wanting to risk the field position with coming up on three and a half minutes left. They're going to try and get Harding back there and hold them and get into the get into the locker rooms down only two scores. I'm sure right now we're up here. We can't hear it, but I'm sure they're telling them watch the ball. Watch that hard count. And that is does not look like Deshaun Vaughn back there to punt. Can't see a number as of yet. I wonder if that's their regular kicker. That could be Anthony Ruggles back there. I'm not sure if that's 47 or not. And it's a high spiraling kick. Bay's going to take that one. Gets a little bit of room out to the 50. Still on his feet, almost to the 45 yard line. And that was their regular kicker on that punt, number 47, Anthony Ruggles. Well, now you see why that last punt, Harding called the timeout when they put the quarterback back there. Something, you know, and it could have been just simply to make Harding burn that timeout. But Harding's going to start out with decent field position. 
here on the uh, Fitch, Fitch side of the 50. Three minutes, 10 seconds left. Only one timeout uh, for the Raiders, but the field position they have, they've got great opportunity to be able to couple, put a couple more points on the board. We talk about all year how important it is to have a guy like Jake Doherty, four-year starter for the Raiders. You get about 20, 25 yards, that's going to be in his range. You go into halftime up 16 to nothing, that's going to be a great momentum boost for the Raiders coming out in the second half. Bay in motion. Bay's going to get, Bay sending up the pass, and Bay is going to get sacked for a big loss all the way back to the Raider 45-yard line. The Raiders trying a little bit of trickery right there, and it backfired. Yeah, Austin Town wasn't fooled, only had two receivers to the, to the far side. Looked like they were kind of just decoys. Looked like that play was designed to come to the backside here. You saw the quarterback, Chaz Coleman, release out of the backfield, but the Fitch defense was not fooled by it. Had every word covered. Unfortunately, Austin, or excuse me, uh, Aris took a uh, big, big sack there uh, for a loss of 10 on the play. Raiders going to use their final timeout of the half. They'll be facing a second down and 19 from their own 45-yard line. 2.36 to play in this second quarter. And yeah, the Raiders couldn't ask for anything better here up 13-0. Two minutes left with the ball. 2.36 left with the ball uh, prior to, prior to halftime here. Just, it all starts up front. We talk about it all the time. This Raider defense with their front three has been able to really stop the uh, Austintown Fitch running game and get pressure on the quarterback, getting the ball out of his hands before he wants to, uh, to, to create some short plays for the Fitch Falcons. And on the offensive side of the ball, the, the offensive line has been dominating. We've seen big runs by 22 Ryan Powell. We've seen big runs by number five, uh, Javante Jones. It all stops starts up front. And right now, the Raider offense and defensive line are controlling the line of scrimmage. Raiders coming out of their final timeout of the half. They have a second down to 19. That's the handoff to Jones again. Javante Jones. Javante Jones with a big game all the way down to the Austin Town Fitch 26 yard line. Look, I'm telling you, watch Javante Jones here. Hits the middle, sees nothing there, bounces outside, but watch the watch the yards after contact. That is determination. That's what the coaches want to see. That's what the scouts want to see at the next level. Javante Jones again. He's going to be stacked up at the line of scrimmage. He might have picked up one on that play, bringing up a second down and nine from the 25. We've seen a, a, a just a slew of running backs for the Raiders this year. Every one of them offering a different dynamic, whether it's speed or power. You've watched all these running backs, and specifically Javante Jones and number four, uh, Izzy Reynolds. Just the yards after contact is what I'm most impressed with with those two. Coleman back to pass. He's going to keep this one. He might pick, he actually picks up nothing on that. It's going to bring up third down and nine. Took a big hit on that play. Yeah, Chaz took a big hit, pressure in the line of scrimmage. Linebackers did their job by staying at home. Corners and safety stayed on their receivers. That's going to bring up a third and nine here from the 25. So that's 25. What's that? 35. That's 42 yards right now if uh, they were to attempt a field goal here by Jake uh, Doherty. And Coleman drops back the pass under a lot of pressure. And Coleman is going to go down way back at the 38-yard line, and that's going to settle any discussion of a field goal attempt at this point. Yeah, what you didn't want to happen right there. That's one of the only issues when you got an athlete. Athletes always believe they can make the play, and you know what? Seven times out of ten, Chaz makes that play. That time there, give credit to the defense, uh, able to, to pursue, bring him down for the big loss, take him out of field goal range, Fourth and 21 with 59 seconds left. We'll Fitch see. calls a timeout, try and conserve a few of those seconds. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, the Raiders would have been comfortable at this point uh, with the field position of just letting that clock run down, maybe throwing the ball to the end zone for one last play here. Now Coach Arnold's going to have to make a decision if uh, he's comfortable with leaving uh, his offense out there, taking a shot at the end zone, giving Fitch decent field position, not anything great. 
or taking the opportunity to just punt this ball, seeing if Jake can hit one of those corner kicks uh, and pin Fitch deep in their own territory with less than a minute left in the first half. And that's what they're going to try to do. They bring the punt team out. Now we've seen some difficulties on the punt team here. Few, few punts, kicks blocked this year. 59 seconds left. The first half isn't over. And a and high step snap. backs him up. Dory gets it off. And that ball's gonna that's gonna wind up pretty good. And a late hit back, something back there, and more flags are out. I, this was back around the punter. Dory got that punt off, took it, more flags, more flags. Yeah, at this point, I think that's gotta be on Austin Town. They left this they left the sideline. I don't think this is going to be an offsetting. I think this is going to be against Fitch. You can tell. Like I said, they came in here kind of cocky, kind of, you know, feeling themselves. Never expected themselves to be shut out by the Raiders here in the first quarter, 13 to nothing. And I think some of those emotions are starting to boil over. Doherty had the high snap. It backed him, backed him up. He got the kick off. And I think there might have been a, well, let's hear what they have to say here. Got two fouls on the play. Both dead ball, personal foul on Fitch, personal offset foul again. on Warren. Penalties are going to offset. You know, I, 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 I get it. It takes two to tango, but I give uh, the Raider team a lot of uh, a lot of respect. You know, there's a couple games where they've maintained their composure, stayed on the sideline. No question, Fitch sideline started to clear there. I, I see the coach over here talking to, uh, I see, excuse me, I see the official over here talking to Coach Arnold. Our, our kids maintain their composure. It was the Fitch bench that cleared. I understand it takes two to tango, but at the end of the day, our kids are maintaining their composure. It's the other side that is coming out on the field. Uh, able to get it under control pretty quickly, but let, let's, let's, let's keep this in perspective. Another good effort by Jake Doherty off a bad snap. Gets that punt off, and that backs Fitch up inside the 15. They're going to get the ball down around the 13-yard line with 48 seconds to play on a play that could have gone a very different way. Yeah, we've seen some problems with the snaps, whether it be uh, whether it be the center to the quarterback or it be the, uh, the special teams. We've seen some issues uh, all year with some of those snaps. Jake Doherty able to, and I think that comes down a lot to that four-year experience that he has. He doesn't get nervous, keeps his composure, able to gather the ball, get a good kickoff, going to pin uh, uh, Fitch back uh, deep into their territory with 48 seconds left in the first half. And we got another flag. I think that's going to be on the Fitch coaches. I think the Fitz coaches had uh, maybe one word too many to say to the officials. A dead ball, unsportsmanlike against Fitch. 15 yard penalty. They pointed First towards down. Harding, but obviously that penalty was against Fitch. Gonna push them back another 15 yards here late in the second quarter. Will have to distance the goal, push him back to yep. around the six yard line at this point. And that's exactly where Fitch is going to set up. And that's going to make it first down in about 16. Now Fitch only one time out here with 48 seconds left. Can't believe that they're going to be comfortable with going into the half down 13 nothing. This is high school. The ball will, the, the clock will stop on a first down. Well. And Fitch is going to kneel down, and they're going to take that, what they have right now, go back in, try to regroup. Then everybody uh, regroup and uh, regain some composure here, come out for the second half. Fitch will take... Uh, 
Yeah, the clock's all because they ran the clock, but then they didn't start the game clock. So that I don't think Fitch is going to have to take another snap. They yeah, can head it into the locker room. 30, 30 seconds on the play clock, 24 seconds on the game clock, and that's going to do it for the first half as Harding will go into the locker room with a 13 to nothing lead over the Fitch Falcons. So stay tuned for the halftime show. The Austin Town Fitch Band followed up by the Warren Harding Raider Marching Band. So it should be an entertaining halftime show. Two bands with a lot of tradition, two very good bands. And uh, Eddie and I will be back in a few minutes. See you soon.
and gentlemen, tonight we present the 2023 Raider Marching Band. The band is under the direction of Reed Young and Heather Cerny. Summer assistants include John Fitch, Kaylee Hall, Kristen Richter, Melanie Vlad, and Antoine Howard. Our major ed instructors are Marissa Wilkie and Gabby Jones. Flagline instructors are Celeste Harris and Mariah Coker. Percussion instructors are Brian Yager and Jordan Ringgold. The band is led onto the field by field commanders Wayne Harris, Amari Jackson, Deshaun Poole, and head drummer Elise Vaughn. The Raider Band is proud to present our 2023 show entitled Empowered. Featuring a variety of hit songs we know you'll enjoy with soloist Chris Ramsey, Michaela Eisenberg, and Sarah Bell, here is Shine Down. Next, our majorettes and flag line are featured to this 1975 hit from the group Earth, Wind, and Fire. Here is Sing a Song.
The Raider Band is on the move with this 2020 hit from the K-pop group Stray Kids. With an additional feature by the Raider Drumline, here is All In. Raider Band would like to thank all of you for being a wonderful audience tonight. Now join us as we cheer our Raider team. Thank you. 
Welcome back as we get ready to start the second half. Got a few seconds left on the halftime clock. Ticking down the second half kickoff. Raiders coming out to start the third quarter with a 13 0 lead. 36 yard touchdown run by Javante Jones and a four yarder around the left end by Ryan Powell. And that is your scoring for this evening. Couple shall we say, emotional moments there late in the first half. So hopefully uh, teams have regrouped and uh, regained composure. We're looking forward to a hard fought, clean second half. No, absolutely, Tom. You saw before uh, the teams <clears throat> came out on the field here, referees called the captain to the middle of the field, had a conversation with them. You know, you, you never like to see things like that. You want to, you know, you want to solve everything between the white lines. But look, let's talk about that dominance, the dominance of the front line, offense and defense by the Raiders. That's what led to this 13-0 score here. That front three of the Raiders' defense has been dominant all night, getting pressure on the quarterback, allowing for that defense to do a lot of different things because they only had to pressure with those front three. Offensive line, we talked about the running of Ryan Powell, Javante Jones, uh, Chaz Coleman. It all starts up front. Thus far, it's been dominance by the Raider uh, uh, line of scrimmage on the defense and offensive side. Let's see if they can keep that going here in the second half. Jake Doherty getting set to put the ball in play. So far, he's kind of squibbed it tonight. And this time, he boots it deep. Fitch was looking for the squib. That ball's going to die at about up. the one-yard line. It's number three, Dan Evans back here. And Evans doesn't make it out to the 10. So Fitch is going to start deep in her own territory at about the nine-yard line. The Raiders kind of tripped up the Falcons there. They were waiting for that squib kick. Jake kicked it over their heads. He's got a nice bounce. It just died there like a pitching wedge. No, absolutely, Tom. They set that up from the first half. Jake's been squib kicking it all, all half. They had some problems there before the half, before the half, handling that squib kick. Sent those returners up to about the 15, 20 yard line. Jake was able to put it over their head. Nice, as you said, nice way to set up there. That's going to set the, uh, the the Austin Town offense back early here within their 10 yard line to start out the second half. Quarterback Deshaun Vaughn. Once again, leads that offense out. And again, he's got DeAndre Richard in the backfield with him. First and 10, Fitch from their own nine-yard line. A lot of and room on the slot pass. there. A little bit underthrown, looking for Dan Evans out there on the right. Brings up a second down and 10. Yeah, the quarterback saw Evans there. Safety was picking him up to begin with. Gave him about 12, 15-yard cushion. Came up at the end. Evans didn't realize it. Uh, excuse me, quarterback didn't realize it. Tried to hit him with a quick quick pass out there ended up falling incomplete going to bring up a second and ten <clears throat> no, 
Second down and 10, Fitch from their own nine yard line. Second half just underway. And this time Vaughn keeps it, tries to get a run at end. Picks up a few, looks like they're gonna get him out to about the 13 yard line. That's gonna bring up a third down and six. Javante Jones there coming in on the blitz, but look at that recovery speed. I mean, he was he was two, three yards into the backfield, full speed, able to stop on a dime, get back out there, recover the edge, stop the quarterback for a short gain to bring up this third and six. <clears throat> Fitch with three receivers up high. Vaughn fires it over the middle. Finds number 11, Brady Evans. That looks like that's going to be enough for a Fitch first down. Gets it out to about the 23 yard line. And the Fitch Falcons moving the sticks early here in the second half. Vaughn able to find that soft coverage over the middle there. Able to hit number 11, Brady Evans there to move the sticks. This time the handoff is DeAndre Richard, finds a little bit of room that closes up quickly and winds up only with a gain of about two. Second down and eight from the 25. DeAndre Richards, freshman, not able to uh, get much going in the first half. He's gonna come out here for a gain of two. That front three for the, uh, for the Raider defense still continuing that dominance, controlling the line of scrimmage. Looked like he had some daylight there for a second, but mm -hmm. it shut up quick on him. We talk about, you know, we know they're undersized, so they're trying to use their athleticism. Great closing speed by this entire defense. Second down and eight. Falcons at their own 25. The handoff is again to Richard, and again, there's a flag on the play. Richard gets it out, maybe three more yards, out to about the 29. Looks like that's in the area of maybe a hold. Let's see what the officials call here. We await the call here. Looks like they're gonna call this against Harding. Face mask. Face mask. So Harding defense. gets hit with a face mask penalty. That's penalty. going to result in another Fitch first down as we move the chains down. forward. And that was the 15 yard variety. Brings the ball out to the 44 yard line where it will be first and 10 for the Fitch Falcons. Three receivers down here toward the near sideline. All the eligible receivers over here on this side. That's Richard in motion. Vaughn's going to keep this one, and Vaughn will get nothing. The Raiders saw that coming. That's going to bring up a second down and 10. Yeah, once again, great job by the defense reading that there. That's a straight quarterback draw. You see sophomore. We talked about him. He's been starting for about the last five games here. Uh, Tyler Smith coming up from that left outside linebacker position wasn't fooled able to rack up the quarterback for for, for little to no gain <clears throat> Second down and ten ball still at the 44 yard line We're a couple minutes into the second half it is 13 to nothing Harding Vaughn's gonna keep this one he's rolling out the pass under a lot of pressure trying to scramble out it's going to keep this one and get out of bounds. Maybe a one or two yard game brings up a third down and long for the Falcons. Look like that, that play could have uh, developed into something the way he hit the corner, but Devontae Ellis not giving up on the play. Number 52, big man using his speed, rushing the quarterback to the sideline, using that as his 12th defender. He's going to bring up a long third and 10 here for the Raider defense. <laughs> Vaughn covered about 30 yards running around back there, but didn't get anything positive out of it. It is third down and 10 for the Falcons. Big play here early in the second half. Vaughn back to pass. Got some time backer over the middle. And he finds Brady Evans. That's going to result in the first down. Gets it into Raider territory. He's pulled down at the Raider 40-yard line. First down, Fitch. Yeah, give that Fitch uh, offensive line credit there. Harding only sent three, dropped everybody back in coverage there. Looking to uh, plug those lanes. Fitch able to find the hole for a first down. Trying to get a quick snap off there. Might have been a little too quick. <clears throat> Third 
Illegal substitution. Defense. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. Harding not able to get uh, people in place in time for that. Results in a five yard illegal substitution penalty. It's going to bring up a first down and five at the 35. Nine minutes to go here in the third quarter. Yeah, Tom, we talk about the dominance of the uh, control of the line of scrimmage on the offensive defensive side. One of the other things that led to this 13 0 score was Harding staying out of the penalties last, uh, the first half. Vaughn looking, Wide he open. finds a man over there, and I think that was Dominic Perry. Perry, that's going to result in a first down and goal. Actually, no, it looks like he's out of bounds at about the 16, but it is a first down for Fitch at the Harding 16-yard line. See some confusion in coverage there uh, as we see a lot in the high school game here, putting those wide receivers out there, trip, trips, quadruple, uh, used to that screen pass that you've been seeing all night. Corner safety, both bit on that screen. Let that wide receiver break free to the outside. Quarterback was able to identify him for a nice game for the Fitch offense. There's DeAndre Richard gets through the line of scrimmage for a few. Looks like maybe about four. Let's call it three. Down about the 13-yard line. Brings up a second down and seven. And this was an Austin Town Fitch drive that started on their own nine-yard line. And this is exactly what the Falcons were looking for coming out, getting the ball to start the second half. Yeah, they've been able to move the ball here on the ground through the air. You see there the left tackle pulled. Uh, running back 22 just followed him through the hole for a decent gain of three yards here now inside the uh, Raider 20-yard line. Second down and seven. There, there's a handoff. That ball's on the ground, and Vaughn is going to cover it, but he's going to do so at a big loss. That ball goes all the way back to the 23-yard line. That's going to bring up a third down in about 18 yards. Well, we talked all year, that center quarterback exchange, even from the uh, shotgun there. Raiders brought a little pressure. Tyler Smith on the play there. Quarterback's picking the ball up, thought he had a little bit of room to run, but the sophomore came in quick, was able to secure him in the backfield to bring up this long third and 16, possibly spoiling a positive drive here for the Austintown Falcons. Vaughn back to pass, it gets a little dump yeah. screen off. He finds number four, Donovan Bell Sullivan. Sullivan gets some positive yards up to about the 11 yard line. Play took a long time to develop here. You see the quarterback dropping back deep, finds Sullivan. Sullivan had some room to run, a couple blockers. Kind of outran his blockers there. You saw 55 out in front, uh, wasn't able to get a block on anybody. Running back decided to take it on his own. That's gonna bring up this fourth and five. We'll see if Austin Towns went willing to settle for three, or they're gonna take their chances and go for it here on fourth Looks and like five. Fitch is gonna go for it, and they have a kicker with a strong leg, but they're gonna take their chances here. Fourth and five, big play early for both these squads. And Harding is going to call a timeout and talk about this fourth down play. You know, great timeout here by the coach. Hate to burn one here early or midway through the uh, the third quarter, but this is a huge play, fourth and five. This is, this is by far the best drive Austin Town has had. Had a drive earlier uh, in the first half that looked promising, ended in a turnover. Uh, they, they got a fourth and five right here. Most promising drive coming out of the half. Austin Town really wants to put some points on the board. I guess the coach looks at it as no reason to go for three. You're still going to be down by two scores, so you might as well take your opportunity. Even if you miss it, you're going to pin the Raiders back deep. But, man, will this be a momentum shift if uh, the Raiders can hold here on fourth and five here midway through the se uh, third quarter. 6.38 to go to third quarter. Again, Harding sitting on that 13 and nothing lead. Fitch with the opening kickoff started at their own nine yard line and they have thus far gotten it down to the Raider 11. Well, you talk about the difference between the first half and this first drive here. Fitch was bit by the penalty bug all through the first half. Uh, holding penalties, face mask, mask penalties. On this drive here, you've seen uh, Harding come out, get bit by that bug themselves, allowing Fitch to get the ball here uh, deep into Raider territory on the 11, setting up this fourth and five. Fourth and five, there are two receivers out to the right, slot man and a receiver to the left. Vaughn awaiting the snap. He's gonna roll out to his right. He's looking for Dan Evans over there in the end zone. And he finds him, and that's going to be a first down and goal for the Fitch Falcons down around the Raider third yard line. Give credit to the Austin Town uh, front five there. 
Gave the quarterback enough time. Strong throw to number three, Dan Evans. Been calling his name all night. Great, uh, great catch, great possession. Going to give Austintown first down at the three-yard line. First and goal, Fitch at the Raider three, and they are knocking at the door. They've had the ball so far this entire third quarter. There's the handoff to DeAndre Richard. And Richard is going to reach across the line for a score. And the Fish Falcons are on the board with 6.04 to play here in the third quarter. Richard able to start it out to the middle, bounce it outside, able to use some strength, speed, and determination to hit that corner. It's going to give Fitch their first points of the, of the game. They're back in it here, 6.13 with their kicker coming on. Trying to make this a six-point game. Anthony Ruggles for the Falcons on to attempt the extra point. And that kick is up and good. And it is a 13 to seven ball game with 6.04 to play in the quarter. There's a Looks like there's a flag. We'll flag see if this- Flag back on the goal line there. Well, we'll wait the call here from the officials. Looks like that's going to be whatever it is is going to be tacked on to the kick. You know, you come out 13 nothing in the uh, first half, go into the locker room at halftime. It's all about adjustments. Obviously, Austin Town saw some things. Obviously, this this uh, drive was aided by by some penalties. Uh, you want to clean that up. But Austin Town able to find something, get a drive going, and able to complete that drive to get in the end zone for six. Extra point makes it seven. Got a brand new game here. We'll see how the Raiders respond. Still waiting for the call. Well, let's see if they wave it off. <laughs> All that for. <laughs> well, there looks like the kickoff's going to happen at the, uh, well, they're going to maybe an encroachment penalty or something on the Raiders on that extra point. But the uh, Falcons are going to kick off from the 45. So it was a five-yard penalty of some sort against Warren Harding on the extra yeah. point attempt. Looked like he motioned. Looked like he motioned. Uh, False like start. Looked like but, an illegal procedure right, call. Right, something of that sort. Which is uh, an unusual call against the defense, but at any rate, the uh, Falcons are going to kick off from the 45, and if the opening kickoff is any indication, I don't see much of a return happening here. Yeah, opening kickoff uh, 47. That's uh, Anthony Ruggles. Anthony Ruggles showed a strong leg, able to put that probably four or five yards in the end zone. He accepted, expected him to be able to put this deep in the end zone for no return. And he, and he does just that. So the Raiders, with their first possession of the second half coming up, they're going to start first down and 10 at their own 20 yard line. Well, Harding came out first half. <clears throat> Couple big punches, uh, set Austin Town back. Saw some emotions fly from that. Went into the locker room, regrouped. Austin Town comes out. They throw the first big haymaker shot. Able to put seven on the board. Put themselves right back in this game. We'll see how the Harding uh, how the Harding offense responds. Jazz Coleman remains at quarterback. I think that might have been Antonio Smith back there to start the second half of running back. Yes, it was. Number 10, Antonio Smith. Smith gets one. It'll be second down and nine. Haven't seen uh, Antonio Smith out of the backfield much in the first half. Looking to get him going with that speed. One of the players, one of the many players that Harding has that can score from anywhere on the field. 
The give is again to Antonio Smith, and again, Antonio Smith, oh, and there's the ball's loose, and Fitch appears to have the ball. That was number two, Davion Pritchard, who came up with the ball. They stripped it away from Antonio Smith, and all of a sudden, Fitch has the ball first and 10, looks like at the Raider 15-yard line. Antonio Smith right up the gut. Antonio Smith, they got him listed at uh, 5'10", 170, but as I said before, he runs like he's 220, lowered that head, uh, but they were Fitch was able to get their hands on the ball, rip it out there. Great opportunity now here for the Fitch Falcons deep into the Raider territory. Opportunity not only to tie this game up, but to take the lead. So big turn of events here to start the second half, and Fitch, after having already scored, now find themselves first and first and ten at the Raider 15. And he's got number 10. That was Junie Higgins all by himself. And Fitch in one play has tied the ball game after that, after that turnover. Sorry, number Junie Higgs. Another blown coverage there. We saw what led to the first touchdown was the blown coverage to the far side. This was blown coverage to the near side. You see Javante Jones knew it, had his head in the backfield there. Uh, receiver able to get behind the safe, behind the uh, secondary. Easy pitch and catch. Quickly with 518 left. Austin Town Fitch with an opportunity to take the lead on the Raiders here in the third quarter. Ruggles on for the extra point. It is up and it is good. And just like that, the Fitch Falcons have jumped in front of the Raiders 14 to 13. Right now you see the coaches bringing them over here. It's all about composure. You came out in the first half, threw a couple shots. You scored your two. Austin Town wasn't able to respond. They came out this half. They threw a couple punches. Now let's see where it is. We've got a brand new ball game, one point game. Let's see how this Raider offense responds. Ossetel Fitch basically scoring on back to back offensive plays. DeAndre Richard ran it in with around six minutes to play in the third quarter, scored. Kickoff, Harding ran off one play and then had the ball stripped from Antonio Smith on their second down play. And on the first play from scrimmage after that, Deshaun Vaughn finds Junie Higgs for the touchdown. And the Raiders facing their first real adversity of the night. Well, you know, this Austin Town team, you know, give credit to the to the coaching staff, the players, uh, how they've built this program up over the last five, you know, six, seven years. Austin Town, one of the perennial powerhouses here in, in the Valley. You knew they weren't going to just go down you know, the way they did in the first half. You knew there were some punches coming, so the Raiders have taken them. Now it's time to respond. Ruggles sends that ball deep and in another one into the end zone. So one more time, the Raiders are going to start first and 10 at their 20 with 5.18 to go here in the third quarter. And for the first time tonight, the Raiders find themselves down 14 to 13. Oh, this is a great opportunity for the Raiders right here, facing a little bit of adversity, as you, as you had mentioned. Uh, this is all in preparation for next week. You know, you want to go out here. You, you've had you've, This is the 10th week. This is everything that you've done during the offseason, everything you've done uh, during the regular season. All comes down to leading into the playoffs. This is, this is the tune up here. You want to be hitting on all cylinders. Here's your opportunity for this offense and this defense to show what they've got. Hand off is to Ryan Powell. Powell gets into the line, gets out for about four yards. Brings up a second down and six for the Raiders at the 24-yard line. Ryan Powell just powering forward ahead for four yards. A play that looked like it could have easily ended up in a one. Yeah, it looks like we got a Raider that's down. Can't tell if that was Powell or not. A big run looks up like, the uh, Looks like they're stretching out, possibly stretching out a cramp down there. They got that leg up in the air. So hopefully that's all it is. Just Yeah, can't really tell from this angle. You always get nervous. 
Can't tell. It doesn't look like that's a cramp because they're not they're not that's pulling back on the out. foot. Not sure if maybe it's a hamstring they're trying to stretch out there. That's what from the looks of it, it looks like they're trying to stretch a hamstring. Better side than them laying him flat working on the knee there because that's what the fear was. Now they're now they're pulling his foot back, so. Yeah, I'm still thinking that maybe that, that might be a hamstring. You know, unfortunately, we're used to seeing yeah. the cramps. Uh, usually you see that more towards the uh, beginning of the year when we have those warmer temperatures. But, you know, you're out here, you're giving your all. You know, that sweat's pouring out. You go in both ways. Don't have time to get over there to get the water back in your body. And sometimes that ends up in a cramp. Uh, but this looks like this might be a hamstring. Hopefully they can maybe just stretch him out, try to get him back out on the field. We're stopped at 4.58, left to go in the third quarter. Harding jumped out to a 13 to nothing lead in the first half, and Fitch has answered quickly in the second half with two very quick scores, a long drive that resulted in a touchdown and then a turnover and, and a one play turnaround to put Fitch on top 14 to 13. So it is a dogfight now to the finish. No, absolutely, Tom. And I, I tell you, you know, you see some of these players out here you know, in, in the years that we've been calling their names, it looks like Ryan is up, looks like he's uh, obviously up under his own power, but uh, want to take the opportunity to give a quick shout out uh, to some of the lower levels. Um, your little Raiders, all three big, little and middle team, all advanced to the Super Bowl. Uh, you've got great teams coming out of that 7th and 8th grade class. I do believe it's the 7th grade class that went 8-0 this year. Want to give a congratulations to them as well. That only speaks volumes to this program going forward. It's Javante Jones. He might have gotten a yard on that play before he got thrown backwards. Looks like that'll bring up a third down and five. Got it out to maybe the 25-yard line. Actually, no gain on the play. They're going to spawn him back at the 24, and it's third down and six. Javante Jones staying in there for this one, giving Ryan Powell a little breather over there, get that leg stretched out. Coleman back to pass under some pressure, and Coleman tries to get it off. He does get it off, avoids the sack, but that's going to bring up a fourth down and six. You know, thus far, the difference between the first and the second half is pretty simple. Penalties in the control uh, of the line of scrimmage. First half, it was dominated by the uh, Raider offense and defensive lines. This uh, starting out here in the second half, you can see that switch where you're seeing that domination coming from the uh, uh, from the Fitch offense and defensive line, keeping that defense keeping that, the offense on their toes, keeping Chaz on the toes, not letting those running backs find those holes, get the yards, going to come up with a fourth and six and cause the Raiders to punt here down 13 to 14 in the third quarter. Jake Doherty on the punt, and I think we took a little too much time with that. That's going to be fixed. Oh, no, no, they're changing it. So Harding takes a little too much time. You know, you hate to see that. You, you got a close game here, 13-14. I think that's going to bring Harding down or, to... Uh, actually, I think maybe Harding got the timeout. Yeah, they did get the so, timeout, but that's going to limit them to one uh, timeout one time out for the close rest game. of the half. We've seen that kind of all year long. Uh, a lot of it comes, giving the coaching staff credit, they're getting some of these young guys in, changing up the personnel, uh, but unfortunately, that sometimes that adds to some confusion, and we've seen... Uh, over the year where that's led to some uh, timeouts being called in positions where Coach Arnold definitely would have liked to uh, preserve those timeouts for later in the game. We'll see if that missed field goal, uh, that blocked field goal as well as, or blocked extra point, as well as having to burn these early timeouts uh, comes back to haunt uh, this Harding team later in the game. Doherty back on the punt. That ball is going to be fielded. Dan Evans avoids one tackle, gets it up past the 50. He's going to be down around the 46, 47 yard line of Warren Harding. And Fitch, once again, with some pretty decent field position. Yeah, big, big possession here uh, for the Harding defense. Falcons have been uh, dominant in this second half here, uh, pretty much doing what they need to do through the air, on the ground. Uh, defense has been st uh, just stout, stepping up, 
Uh, we talk about just watch the front line. When, when, you, when you see the white pushing the black back or you see that blitz coming and you don't see them get penetration, uh, you, you see where that line's being dominated at. Right now, the Austin Town Fitch offensive and defensive line just controlling the, the second half. Quick pass down the sideline. Anthony's out of bounds. In the pros, they call that a back shoulder throw. I'm not sure if that was a back shoulder throw or he just underthrew him, but gave his receiver great opportunity there. Can't see who that is. Oh, that's uh, the sophomore uh, 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 Provit out there hawking the ball there. Needed a couple more inches of real estate. That could have been a great turnover for the Harding defense. Looking for Dominic Perry over there at sideline. Perry with a couple big catches for the Falcons so far this evening. It is second down and 10 at the Harding 48-yard line. And this time the handoff is DeAndre Richard. Richard breaks through. He's going to get close to another first down. Pulled ahead. And he will move the chains on this, on this carry. Gets it up to about the 37-yard line, 11-yard pickup for DeAndre Richard on that play. Left side of the line for the Falcons there, pulled open up the hole. See the difference between the first and second half there. Uh, Harding was able to get a lot of pressure, create a lot of confusion, hits for loss in the first half by just rushing those front three. That time they brought the two inside linebackers. They weren't able to get home. That caused the running back to be able to get upfield for a nice gain of 11 and move the sticks. First and 10 at the Harding 37, and Fitch is on the move again, trying to score for a third straight time here in the third quarter. This time the handoff is to number, looks like number 11, Brady Evans. Actually number 10, Judy Higgs with that one. And he picks up nine, it's second down and one. Once again, credit to that Fitch line. Harding, was, Harding sent two inside linebackers on the blitz there. Uh, unfortunately, not able to get to the running back. Uh, he had some space there, able to get a nice gain, set up this second and one for the Fitch Falcons. Nice! And that ball is picked off! Vaughn looking for the dump screen! It is picked off by the Raiders! First down, Harding! And Harding's first big break of the second half! Number 27, Tyler Smith, sophomore, been saying his name. You talk about a play there, coming from that left outside linebacker position. He goes up with one hand, able to come down with the interception, bringing it up field there. Amazing play by the sophomore, Tyler Smith. Watch him as he's, they tell you, if you can't get to the quarterback, get your hands up. Getting that, getting those throwing lanes, he was able to take it one step further, get one hand up, come down with that interception. Great turn of events for the Harding defense. Snatch that down like a basketball rebound, he did. And it is first and 10, Harding at the 50-yard line. Yeah, unbelievable play. We'll see if that's the spark that this Raider team needed to get itself going here in the second half. Looks like there's some question here. Chaz Coleman, he's got Javante Jones lined up behind him as we await this first down play. 2.50 to play in the third quarter. Fitch with two quick scores in the middle of the quarter. Looked to be driving for a third. And what an outstanding defensive play by Tyler Smith, jumping up to snatch down that little screen pass and Harding back in business at the 50-yard line. And the give is to Javante Jones. Jones trying to get outside. He'll pick up a couple. We'll give him one. That's second down and nine at the Fitch 49. Yeah, Jones took that handoff deep in the backfield, trying to, trying to get their athletes in space there to make a play, but give that uh, Fitch defense a lot of credit being able to maintain their lanes, protect the outside, and use the sideline as a 12th defender. Second and nine. Javante Jones again, and he can't find anything. That play is going to result in a two-year loss 
And that brings up third down and 11 for Warren Harding. Big third down play for the Raiders coming up if they you hope know, to get some momentum back in this contest. You know, and we saw this a little bit last week against Maslin where they start running a, a tight end position, but it's basically just another a, another lineman out there just to try to get a little more protection on the on, on the line there. That time, Austin Town able to get around it for no gain. Coleman back to pass. Finds his man, but he can't hang on to it. A little bit underthrown. I think he's looking for Eris Coleman Bay out there. Bay can't hold on to it. It's fourth and 11, and the Raiders are going to be forced to punt. Looks like he made the right read there. Eris Coleman Bay had some space on his uh, defender. Unfortunately, not able to come up with it. Was going to put him in pretty decent position there for a fourth and short. Looks like at this time, they're looking for Jake to try to pin this Fitch uh, offense back deep uh, for the Harding defense. High snap, and Fitch was coming after that, and Doherty had no chance to get that punt off. Everybody seemed to be coming on that play. A high snap, and that delayed Jake from getting into his punting motion. And all of a sudden, Fitch once again with the ball deep on the Harding side of the field, first and down at the Harding 36-yard line. Well, you know Fitch has watched the tapes. They have saw that the Raiders have struggled with that snap all year. Uh, saw some issues with it earlier in the game here. No reason to sit back in a punt return. Might as well come after him, take your chances. That time it worked out for the Falcons. They're going to be able to take over the ball here uh, in pretty good position, uh, spoiling a great opportunity after the interception by Tyler Smith. Going to put the Falcons in good position here uh, on the Raiders' side of the 50. That handoff is to Junie Higgs, and Higgs is going to lose a yard. The Raiders snuff that one out. Second down and 11 coming up. Yeah, brand new ball game here. You know, you're seeing the you're seeing different players step up here, making some big plays on both sides of the ball. But this is all this is what it's all about in Week 10, Tom. Getting ready to go into the playoffs. Guys stepping up, trying to make names, and there's no better place to make a name than here at Molenkoff Stadium. This is something you'll talk about to your kids uh, 20 years from now, what you did at this field. Vaughn steps back to pass. Gets it downfield. People are getting tripped up down there. No flag on the play. Yeah, that brings up a third down and 11. Yeah, great no call by the officials out there. You see he wanted to go short to that to the uh, slot back there. Thought he had something deep. Receivers, uh, excuse me, defenders in great position. Legs got tangled, tangled up there a little bit. Great no call by the officials. Move on to this long third and 11 for the Falcons. And this could be four down territory for, for Austin Town right now. I think they're feeling pretty confident on offense. They've moved the ball almost at will so far this quarter. Yeah, third down and 11. Big play for the Raiders here. here and Vaughn pressure. under a lot of pressure. Javante Jones tracking down. Vaughn getting back. covered. And that should be a grounding penalty. I don't see a flag on that, but uh, I think it's going to bring up fourth and 11. Yeah, I think, I think Fitch has got a punt here with this fourth and 11. Try to play the field position game. See if they can pin him deep with a little uh, coffin corner kick here. I guess there was uh, number 43 was in the area of that one. Cameron... Natali was in the area, so they didn't have a receiver there. Didn't look like it at first. But a big defensive stand for the Raiders after not capitalizing on the turnover. And they are in a punt formation, but once again, it is the quarterback, quarterback. Deshaun Vaughn, back there. Watch this. They've got trips to both sides here. I don't think Coach Arnold wants to burn a timeout. And Vaughn's going to keep it. He's got the sideline if he wants now it. Now he kicks it, trying to get a little uh, pooch kick. Yeah, we'll take it. They're going to call that at about the, he's bringing it back, 27, 28, about the 28-yard line. So winds up being about a nine-yard punt when it's all said and done. 
Yeah, they took their opportunity there. You know, for a second, it looked like he was just going to hit the sideline there. Trips to the far side and the near side there. Raiders had that covered. Looked like he might have an opportunity to slip up the sideline there. But that Raider defense able to maintain their uh, their lanes, protect the outside, uh, caused him to get that punt off late there for, uh, for a nine-yard kick. Going to put the Raiders in pretty good position considering what that could have ended up with. So the Raiders get the ball back with 23 seconds to play here in the third quarter. They're down by a point, 14 to 13. It's first and 10 at their own 28. You know, the, one, the one thing we haven't seen all night, Tom, we really haven't seen the Raiders try to stretch the field. We talk about the speed they have. Like to see them take a shot here just to let those safeties know they're still there. Coleman keeps it. And Coleman's going to get sacked. No, he hangs on to it. There's a flag. I think we're going to see maybe a face, face mask, mask on that penalty. The yeah. hands were up high. Looks like he got his hands on the helmet there. Chaz with plenty of time. See the pressure coming from his right-hand side. He was able yep. to duck it. An obvious face mask there right in front of the official. We'll see if they call that a 15 or a 5. I saw the head dip down off yeah. that, so I'm pretty sure that's going to be a 15-yarder. Personal foul, face mask, 12, defense. That's going to move the ball up penalty. to about the 43-yard line. Down. First and 10 Raiders. Now, all of a sudden, the Raiders have good field position. 13 seconds to play here in the third quarter. Penalties have played a big part on both sides tonight so far. Kept a few drives alive. We talked about stretching the field. Looked like that's what they were trying to do on that play there. Chaz took the ball back, was looking downfield, didn't find anything. We'll see if they continue with that. And that play is going to result in a loss. They tried to get that one to Ryan Powell. Powell couldn't find too much of anything out there on that one. Well, you see what's happening here. Austin Town starting to send, send some people there, keeping those corners and those safeties and those one-on-one -on -one coverages. Great opportunity to be able to try to find one of those receivers in a one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh, situation, throw up that 50-50 ball and see if your athlete can make a play. And that play takes us to the end of the third quarter. It's Austin Town Fitch, 14, Warren Harding, 13. Harding has the ball second and 12 when we begin the fourth quarter. And we, we've got a good one going here. This one's going to go down to the wire, folks, so don't go away. Well, probably can't ask for anything better than this. Nice, crisp, uh, cool football night here. Friday night, Warren, Ohio, Mollenkopf Stadium. Uh, two story teams here. Both of them looking to extend their season into the playoffs, make that Cinderella run possibly. Once you get in, you never know what happens, but they definitely want to prove something here tonight. These are guys that are going to see each other. They're going to see each other at the mall. They're going to see each other, you know, uh, in other sports. So obviously there's bragging rights that are that are at stake here. Uh, but when you play somebody from over there in Mahoning County, definitely want to uh, 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 show the dominance uh, from both sides of the ball here. Couldn't ask for anything better than a one-point game going into the fourth quarter. And the Raiders with that four receiver set on the right. We saw that in the first half. And again, looking for Ayers Coleman Bay. Dodges one man, not the second one. That's going to bring up a third down and almost ten. Yeah, Austin Town's seen this a couple times. You see that great rally into the ball by the outside and the uh, uh, inside linebacker there to hold uh, Aris Coleman Bay to a gain of one, maybe two, bringing up this third and nine. Looks like they're going with an empty backfield here with Chaz. Five receivers in the pattern. Third down and nine. Coleman drops straight back. Gets the pass out. That's Aris Coleman Bay. Bay dodges one tackler. It. Down to the 40. And Aris Coleman Bay. Actually, that's Antonio Smith. My mistake. Nope. Wrong twice. Najee Jones. Jones yep. We'll get these numbers right. Najee Jones with the big reception and run. And that results in a Raider first down. 
Recognizing the man coverage there, everybody released downfield. Najik got lost in the mix there. All the secondary was about 20, 30 yards downfield. Chaz dropped about 20 yards deep in the uh, uh, backfield, able to find Najik for the first down to extend the drive. Down to the Fitch 36 yard line. Three receivers up to the top. And there's a handoff to Javante Jones. Jones still trying to move ahead. Picks up some good yardage on that play. Looks like he gets about five yards on that. Look, all night long, I've been really impressed with just the hard nose running of Javante Jones. Second down and five. Receivers, we talk about yards after the catch. Running backs, we talk about yards after first contact. Javante Jones running with a purpose tonight. Ten fifty-nine to play here, early in the fourth quarter, and the Raiders are on the move. Javante Jones again tries to get outside. He might pick up a couple right there. Looks like they're going to give him up two, bring up a third down and three. Like this jump cut here to the back to the inside. A lot of times you'll see those, a young running back try to stretch that to the outside, thinking he can beat everybody. This time he realized, did a nice little jump cut back to the inside, lowered that shoulder, got himself some positive yards, but it looks like we've got a Raider down on the field here. That might be Jones that's down on the field. Looks similar to what we saw before. That looks like what we've seen all too often, a cramp. Looks like they're stretching that calf out. Take a look around the field here. Yeah, Javante's coming off under his own power. Look to the south end here. You see the uh, the wellness center coming along pretty well here. Big talk around the community. Big investment by Warren City Schools. Uh, great things going on in the city right now for, uh, uh, for our kids, the adults, uh, for the community as a whole. Third down and three Raiders. They are at the Fitch 29-yard line. Chaz Coleman's going to keep this one. He's going to pound it ahead for the first down. He's inside the 25, down to about the Fitch 23. Dual threat from the quarterback, Chaz Coleman, able to drop back and pass, not afraid to uh, lower his shoulder to move those sticks, give the uh, offense a fresh set of downs. Here at the 26-yard line of the Fitch Falcons. First and 10, Harding. That's Ryan Powell. Powell's gonna get tripped up in the background for a loss of a yard or two. Yeah, great penetration there by the uh, right outside linebacker, the quarterback. Vaughn was able to get in there, trip Ryan Powell up before he can get his uh, momentum going. Gonna end up in a loss of two. Second down and 12 coming up for the Raider offense. Clock continues to tick, 9.30 to play in the ball game. One point ball game, Fitch 14, Harding 13. Harding threatening, trying to get back on top here early in the fourth quarter. Three receivers up on top. The handoff again is to Powell, and Powell again finds the going tough. Might have picked up a yard, maybe two, but it's gonna be third down and long for the Raiders. Yeah, great rally to the ball there by the Fitch Falcon defense. 
hold, holding Powell to minimum to no gain here, going to bring up a third and 12. Uh, but the, 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 the difference is obvious between the first and the second half, uh, the domination of the line of scrimmage to where uh, pitches came back and uh, been able to stand their own on the offense and the defensive side. Uh, actually, they're going to give them a gain of three. They're going to bring up a th uh, third and nine. But that's the difference between the first and second half is just the domination uh, of the line of scrimmage uh, by the uh, Harding Raiders team. See only five in a box. Fitch obviously looking for a, uh, a pass here. Looks like they're going to talk about it. No. Oh. Dead ball. Delay That's game. That's going to be a delay game. Is. Harding Number took 13, just a little bit too long. Penalty. Coach Arnold obviously not wanting to burn that timeout right. right there. We'll take the five yards to keep the timeout for a little bit later. In this close ball game. Well, I think in this position here, you tell your quarterback, you're third and 11 inside the 30-yard line. This is absolute two-down territory. Just whatever you do, do not take a loss right here. You'd like to give Jake uh, Dory a chance here. Now it's a one-point game. Coleman back to pass, a lot of time. Yeah, he's he's going right to get side. outside the pocket, trying to get around that corner, still on his feet, and he's going to throw this one away. He was outside the tackle. Ball made the line of scrimmage, so we shouldn't see any flags for, for intentional grounding. That's going to give him an opportunity. I think we're out of the range of Jake, but I think that's going to give that Harding offense an opportunity at one more play here on fourth and 14. Kind of in no man's land here on the field. Don't want to yeah. risk a punt. They're going to bring Jake out and oh. give him a shot. Well, it looks like they're going to try to. They're going to be a 45 yard attempt. All right. So, big field goal attempt for the senior, 45-yard attempt for Jake Doherty in a one-point ball game, just under eight minutes to play. I tell you, Jake's earned this opportunity for a chance. Let's see if he can put a 45-yarder through. That kick is up, and I think it's gonna be a little short. It was on line. Couldn't quite get the distance, and that's going to be Fitch Ball at the Harding. 28-yard line. Yeah, I don't think you got all of that. You know, we've seen some stronger kicks out of Jake there. Uh, don't think he was able to get all of it. That's going to put the uh, Fitch offense in pretty decent position. It's going to be spotted from where he kicked the ball at. One-point lead here for the Fitch Falcons, 7.48 left. Harding's going to ask that defense to step up once again to make a big stop. That ball went in the end zone, so it looks like a touchback. They're getting the ball back on the 20. Oh, well, one day I'll learn these high school football <laughs> rules. <laughs> Not quite what you see on Sunday, guys. Right, right. <laughs> Look at that hole. There we go. There's a penalty flag on the play on that one. Yeah, Five-yard game for Fitch. See, 27, uh, Tyler Smith been saying his name all night. Been a problem for the Austin Town offense. That time, no Holy choice other than trying to grab him by the jersey right in front of the official. He penalty. caught it. That's going to push uh, Fa the Falcons behind the sticks on him for a first and 20 to start the drive out. That's going to push Fitch back to their 10 yard line. First and 20 on the play. And a huge opportunity for the Raider defense to keep parting in this ballgame. 7.30 to play. The clock will soon start working against the Raiders. Vaughn keeps it. Got him. He gets it out to number four, Donovan Bell Sullivan. Sullivan only gets back to maybe the original line of scrimmage. A little short of that. It's going to bring up down. It looks like a maybe a second down and 12 from the 18. A little old school uh, bootleg there. That is running back out in the uh, out in the flats. Great open field tackle there by Najik. Uh, by Najik. Second down and twelve for the Falcons. That's a quick pass out to Dan Evans. Evans will get it out to about the 27-yard line. He's going to bring up a third down and about three or four. 
They're marking him at the 26, so it will be third down and four for the Falcons. You saw Eris Coleman Bay had a nice shot at the ball there. I think he thought about being able to rip that ball out, see if he could get a turnover there, able to make the tackle to bring up this third and three. You see Junie Higgs in at running back for the Falcons. DeAndre Richard, I think, was being led into the locker room a few moments ago. So hopefully that young man is okay, not hurt too seriously. But Some issues moment. here. The play clock hasn't, hasn't started. Play clock still stuck on 25. And the give is to Junie Higgs. Higgs is going to be caught in the backfield. It's fourth down and long. And I would definitely think that this is a punting situation Absolutely. for the Falcons. And here comes the punt squad. The Raiders are going to get the ball back with plenty of time to play and down by one. Harris Coleman Bay going back to receive this punt. And they've got Anthony Ruggles in to do the kicking. Yeah, right now, I mean, the way the defense has been playing in the second half, you wouldn't assume Austin Town to take any chances here. Put the ball in the, or you kick the, put the ball, push the Raiders back, depend on your defense to come up with a big stop. And that, that is punt. not a good punt for Ruggles. That ball is going to go out of bounds around midfield. And with 5.02 to play, the Raiders have outstanding field position down 14 to 13. Ruggles had a little bit of pressure coming off of his left side, our right. Kind of had to rush that, got it off of the side of his foot there. Probably was trying to angle it out of bounds, not wanting to give one of these uh, speedsters an opportunity with open field, uh, with some open field running room. Off the side of his foot, out of bounds, going to give the Raider offense great offensive position here with 5.02 left down one. The Raiders are going to start at their own 48-yard line, just over five minutes to play. And Coleman's going to keep it. Coleman gets some room. Coleman into Falcon territory. Coleman's still on his feet, all the way down to the fish 33-yard line. Great run by Coleman, keeping his feet. You see, he takes a look. Feels the pressure, spin move, able to get up top. You want to try to arm tackle, that's what you do to him. Pull that spin move, use that athleticism, move the chains. First to 10 Raiders at the Fitch 33 yard line. Clock continues to run. Coming up on 430 to play in the contest. This time the handoffs to Ryan Powell. Powell gets through the line. Powell all the way up to the 22 yard line. It's another first down Harding. Keep the ball moving. And there's a Fitch uh, Falcon down inside the 20. That's number 14, Deontay Stallings for the Falcons. He's down. Yeah, he came in late on the tackle. Looks like he might have taken a helmet to the hip there. And Harding, after a big defensive stand, is on the move with two huge plays to open this drive. That offensive line starting to impose its will on the front three of that Falcon defense. Ryan Powell following up a big run by Chaz Coleman. Right now, I think with the game and the situation that it is, minimal time left. One timeout down by a point. I think you 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 really put this game on the shoulders of your quarterback right now. And Chaz Coleman, <clears throat> all around, he showed the ability to be able to move this ball up and down the field, whether it be with his arm or his legs. You've got four minutes left in the game, down one point. Put the put the ball in the hand of your athletes. Let them make plays. Get them in space. Get them upfield. Get some points on the board. Let that defense bring us home for a victory. Dante Stallings being helped off the field. Raiders first and 10 at the Fitch 22 yard line, 428 to play. Harding down by a single point, 14 to 13. Ryan Powell gets ahead for a couple up to the 20, makes it second down and eight. I like the offense, pounding it up the middle, keeping that defense honest. Watching carefully, see if those ends, see if the outside linebackers 
are, are, are crashing down. Once you see that, you pull that, you, you, you do the fake to Ryan Powell up the middle, give Chaz that opportunity to get one step and get to the outside. Ryan Powell again. Moves the pile ahead to about the 18. That's going to bring up a third down and six for the Raiders. Well within Jake's uh, 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 range here inside the 20 yard line. Going to bring up a big third and six here. Look for uh, Coach Arnold call a play here where he's going to get his quarterback out on the perimeter, make that defense make a choice to either stay back with the receivers or come up on him. Trust your quarterback to make the right decision to tuck and run or to throw that pass up to a receiver one on one. But I fully expect this to be a play that rests solely on Chaz Coleman. Ryan Powell once again. Powell gets it up to the 15 yard line. It's going to bring up fourth down and three. Looked like they went with a safe call there. Running Powell up the middle. I don't see the kicker, number 12, Jake Doherty coming out. Looks like they might want to, they're going to leave, possibly Fitch, leave the Fitch, offense out Fitch there. Fitch has called a timeout. Well, you assume with a play like that, it's third and six. You run a dive up the middle. That means before that play was called, the coaching staff already felt that they were in two down territory. Some struggles with the snaps this year. I think maybe the coaching staff doesn't want to take a chance on that. Has some confidence in the offensive line right now. They seem to be in a, uh, a pretty good groove right now. It's fourth and three. You assume, like I said, when it's fourth and six and you just run a simple dive play up the middle, that must be because prior to the play, they'd already decided they were in four down territory. Just wanted to get a couple yards to make this fourth down a little more manageable at three yards. Or they just heard me and wanted to make me sound <laughs> dumb because of how emphatic I was that Chaz was going to get the ball and pressure the yeah. pressure the I line. I see of Jake Doherty trotting out there, yeah. so he's putting the hand putting the game in the hands of his senior kicker, Doherty, well within his range. Drew McCowan on the hold. Doherty looking to nail a 32-yarder to put the Raiders on top. They're coming. High snap and can't get it off. It is blocked by the Falcons. That ball's live. And it rolls out of bounds around the 17 yard line. So again, another snap that Drew had to kind of reach for and that causes Jake to hesitate just a little bit. That gives the Falcons all the time they need to get in there and knock that one down. You know, we've watched these games all year. You know, our job is to kind of sit up here and set the plays up and you know we've we've saw some struggles uh with the snaps all year saw that dive play that's why the assumption was that they were just setting themselves up for four down territory looked like when austin Town called that time out uh they had a change of heart and said let's send the kicking team out there but unfortunately uh that snap came back to bite him again uh and is going to put that harding defense in a position with only one timeout left with 245 to get this offense off the field to get our offense back on the field, uh, to get ourselves in scoring position. So Fitch takes over at their own 17 with 2.45 to play. The handoff is to Junior Higgs. Higgs might get a yard out of that, brings up a second down and nine. Looks like they're gonna mark him up to the 18 yard line. Fitch is probably gonna be content to keep that ball on the ground, let that clock run down at this point. Yeah, that's where it's difficult, you know, uh, having to burn those timeouts early. Austin Town's going to be very content with two, three yards at a time, maybe on third down, try some type of play action to get the first down, but they're just concerned with running the clock right now. The play clock must be malfunctioning because it's not moving. So right, I've seen that all night long watching. Must have that on down there, keeping that themselves. Junie Higgs once again, and Higgs is going to break through a first down and a whole lot more than Junie Higgs in the Raider territory, and there's a flag at the end of that play. And it could be a face mask yeah, tack yeah. on top of it. Junie Higgs getting behind that big line there, able to tiptoe his way through. A little bit of footwork, and then it was nothing but speed getting up field. Smart by uh, staying in bounds. The clock's gonna stop for them to reset the change and change for the penalty. But as soon as they get that ball set, the clock's gonna start again. 
And it was more the uh, face guarding penalty, I think, because I only moved that ahead about five yards. But at any rate, that just made things a lot more difficult for the Raiders at this point with the Falcons first and 10 at the Raiders 44 yard line. The clock running under two minutes of play and the Raiders with a single timeout to go. Yeah, with one timeout here, it's almost fundamental. <coughs> They're going to run this clock down as far as they can. Obviously, everyone's uh, acknowledged that the play clock is not working. They've got to be keeping that down on the field, giving the quarterback and the defense a countdown once it gets inside the 10 second mark. But with only one timeout left, uh, the Raiders are going to be swiping at the ball, trying to get a turnover. And Fitch calls their second timeout of the half. Yeah, I'm surprised they would call the timeout. They might as well have uh, just taken the penalty. Uh, the Raiders only having one timeout left. One twelve to play here on the last night of the regular season. Austin Town Fitch hanging on to a 14 to 13 lead. Scored a couple quick touchdowns in the middle of the third quarter, but it's been nip and tuck ever since. The Raiders have had their opportunities, just haven't had been able to get over the hump in the last quarter and a half. Well, it was a tale of two halves. You know, the Raiders came out, uh, looked strong, dominating the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. We're able to go up to 13 to nothing. But something that we have saw all year with the uh, with the issues with the snap, uh, we, we've seen some issues on special teams. Unfortunately, missed one of those uh, extra points, which denied them a point, and that's going to be the difference of the game here. We saw some timeouts having to be burned early, uh, some substitution issues, uh, not allowing uh, uh, the Raiders to be able to stop this clock as we've uh, got down to the final minute of the game. But I will give the Raiders a lot of credit. You know, you came into this game after last week, uh, Fitch coming in uh, after a, a pretty strong season. Uh, uh, very proud of how our Raiders team has performed tonight, uh, getting ready for that next week. Just got to be able to put together that complete game, all three phases, offense, defense, special teams. Unfortunately, tonight, I think it's the special teams that probably let them down. Uh, without some of those miscues on special teams, I think we could have uh, we, we, we could have overcome that one-point deficit, uh, but something they're going to have to work at, work at going into week 11 uh, uh, before they enter the playoffs. Fitch in victory formation. Harding called their last time out after that last snap, so Fitch needs to uh, snap the ball one or two more times. Probably one more snap, and that ought to about do it for this evening. Always a pleasure, Ed. Another season in the books for us. Um, it doesn't look like with the loss, I, I don't think Harding's going to host a playoff game, so any chance we might have had of bringing that one to you, that, that pretty much kind of went out the windows as well. But, uh, again, a lot of uh, a lot of thanks to uh, Fred Whitaker, Frank Bozak, and their WSCN crew. Um, thanks for having us along for the ride. No, absolutely, Tom. You, you know, you've said a couple times, you know, the fastest 10 weeks and uh, just as fast as it goes for these players, I think it goes just as fast <laughs> for us. Uh, really enjoy being up here in the booth uh, with the honor of calling these games. Uh, and, and just a shout out to everyone at WSCN for the amazing production they put on and just uh, honored to be able to be a part of it. Clock ticks down the final five, six seconds on a one point Austin Town Fitch win. They are going to uh, move to six and three on the year with a 14 13 win over the Harding Raiders. Raiders are going to finish the regular season at four and six. They do move on to week 11, and we'll wait and see who that opponent may be. But it does appear that the Raiders are going to be on the road in week 11. Yeah, another, uh, you know, another season in the books here. 
Got to watch a lot of young uh, players come up, get a lot of time. We talked about Tyler Smith with just an amazing athletic play uh, for that uh, interception. Looked like he was going to give uh, the Raiders the opportunity uh, to be able to come back, take the lead, but give all the credit to the uh, Fitch Falcons, able to withstand the charge of the first half uh, by the Raiders. So as you said, uh, we've got an expansion, 16 teams. Uh, got an opportunity. This is what you play for. You play for an opportunity. Next week, uh, after this week happens, we'll see who they draw, and we'll be out there uh, with the faithful of the Harding Raiders in the stands, cheering them on wherever they play. So for those of you who uh, stick with us week in and week out, we certainly uh, appreciate you guys tuning in. Hope that, uh, hope that you've enjoyed the broadcast and that uh, Eddie and I always hope we do it a little bit of justice here. And it's it's uh, it's one of our one of our favorite things to do year in and year out, and already looking forward to next August. We get to do it all over again. Oh no, absolutely! <laughs> one of the biggest things, if not the biggest thing, that I uh, look forward to is being able to come back up here and just be a part of the uh, Warren Harding tradition. Uh, it's a great honor, and uh, just glad to be a part of it. And every year, just thankful that they. Uh, Give me the call and ask me to come back to stand next to my good friend uh, Tom Bird and call these games. <laughs> always a pleasure, always a pleasure. So good luck to uh, good luck to the Fitch Falcons next week as they move on, and good luck to our Raiders. As, as we said, we we don't know who we're going to face yet. Uh, probably probably be on the road unless a couple of other things happen that we don't know about yet tonight. But uh, in all likelihood, the Raiders are going to be on the road next week. Uh, good luck to all the uh, seniors who played their last regular season game, our, our band seniors down there, their last regular season game, but they, they get to come out again next week and yeah. do one, at least one more show. The cheerleaders, majorettes. I mean, everyone, we had senior night here tonight, you know, and to the parents who, you know, the effort that they, they put in across the board to get the, uh, to, to get the student athletes uh, to practice and to games, uh, it's got to be difficult. Like I said, what an honor for us to be up here in the booth, even a bigger honor to be able to step between those lines on Molokov Stadium uh, and, and play on fields that truly legends. Uh, you think, about, you think about the players that have run across this field over the decades. It's, it's, it's amazing. Yes. It's amazing. And with that, Raider faithful and any Fitch faithful, I know a couple Fitch fans out there who are watching. I've got family members who live in Austin Town, so good evening to all you and congratulations on your win. So, and all the other uh, football fans near and far who tune in to see us week in and week out, thank you again for being part of our 2023 season. Good luck to our Raiders as they move on next week, and we look forward to seeing you all again next August. Thanks a lot, guys. Good night, everybody.